Tonight, we begin with breaking news. One person killed, the other now fighting for his life after a driver slammed into a crowd at a Wilton Manor's Pride Parade. That man believed to be behind the wheel seen there being taken into custody within minutes. And just a short time ago, we learned the FBI has now joined this investigation. The chaotic crash happening just as the iconic celebration was getting underway. And we have live team coverage tonight. Joseph Ojo is standing by with reaction, but we begin with local 10's Christian De La Rosa, who actually witnessed those dramatic moments. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, <clears throat> the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Mother, sanctifying Yahweh, Shai, the Holy Son. Brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike, welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi. And today is Sunday, June the 20th, 2021, and it's currently 6.25 p.m. Peace be with you. There will be no Jacob's trouble. Be at peace. Be at ease. We are going to a spiritual withdrawal. We are going to a spiritual winning. You know, when a baby is being weaned from the from the mother when the mother is weaning the baby from the breast milk we are being detoxed spiritual detox now beloved the heavenly father is moving through the earth he is moving through the earth is visiting the earth because of his children and he is doing many of his miracles through his children it is because of us. It is because of what happened to us. Now that you see all those things are happening. Now we have this incident that we are going to go through shortly. But be forewarned, beloved brothers and sisters, there will be a lot of uh, videos involving popcorns popping and all that. So we want to tell the nation that for some of you it might be disturbing. And some of you, you will give glory to the Most High no matter what. Now, this happened yesterday and Saturday, uh, Saturday uh, in uh, Florida at Wilton Manor. Uh, for those of you who've been following us for quite some time, you know Wilton Manor is quote-unquote a cowboy community. <laughs> now, with all being said, brothers, this isn't the first time this happened in Wilton Manor. If we do a, a quick little uh, research, search, well, well, I was listening to beloved sister Lisa Cabrera, okay, uh, our things that we didn't ask for. You know, our people don't ask for those things. They are throwing symbolic in your face. You know why? Because they are desperate. Because they cannot fight this battle. They, they're trying to appease you. Back then, they would have never done something like this, okay, giving you a, a statue. Uh, they sent me the... Uh, the these pictures or somebody sent me this article but I, I choose not to speak on it because then again like I said each of us it's a team this is not my position I cannot play this position okay this is that we have certain people in the nation that can play that all right they can share more likes because they are more inclined in this matter you know if I go into this I'm just going to confuse you because I will go uh, on it uh, on, a, on a different angle Forgive me, my mother is taping a box out there, so <laughs> it's uh, it's quite loud. So uh, I was watching the beloved sister uh, video. So let us do a little research, I believe. Um, Wilton Manor Pride Parade 2019 stabbing. Is that what that is? No, that's um. Uh, oh, well, that's uh, hmm, that's five hours ago. Well. 17 because it went recently let's see wilton manor pride parade stabbing uh wilton manor pride parade stabbing ah they keep giving me mm. <laughs> 22 days uh 2019 yeah it happened every single year brother somebody die okay somebody die now you got this guy he's a don't don't get me wrong brothers he's a cowboy too okay he's a cowboy and he did this which showed you the heavenly father spirit is in the midst of this and you're going to see brothers how the father's moving throughout this whole nation all right let us move in christian 
We're on Wilton Drive, right at 16th Street. Right in front of me is where a number of floats and several vehicles were lining up about to kick off the Pride Parade here in Wilton Manors. It is now the scene of a homicide investigation. And as you said, the FBI is now involved. Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, give me a second, these things. Okay, yeah. Check, 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 ah, uh, boy, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second, my apology, this thing is acting up, so I don't want it to be too loud, too low, so it shouldn't, well, in any case, too loud would be better than too low, so let us keep going. It was just past seven, just as the Wilton Manor's LGBTQ parade was getting started. Now, you know, and this is a uh, Wilton Manor. Like I said, it's a cowboy community and they call this thing Stonewall. It's a pride parade, par parade or parade, parade. So now, you know, the seven deadly sins and pride is one of the major one. Pride, if not, if not the biggest one, because it's because of pride and people do a bunch of things it's because of pride. They tell lies. It's because of pride. Um, they, they cheat, they commit adulteries and they, uh, they, they pride, they're proud to do a lot of things and they find pride in there. Now, again, I have no comment on this. What I'm showing you is like the father is using the same people to destroy the same people. Okay, so let us watch. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm a, you would thought like this should be some kind of medical massage. You'll be in for a surprise. <laughs> Tragic chaos unleashed. A pickup truck barreling through a crowd of people. At least two men were run over. First responders within the crowd seen quickly aiding the victims performing CPR as officers went rushing towards the driver. You see how they're taking this guy? You see how they're not hurting him? You see now he's not on the ground with a knee on his neck? You see now they're not being brutalized, this guy? You see how they got a, a, a Negro woman, a Hebrew woman there and uh, taking care of him, try to take this thing around his neck? You see how they're not, being, they're not brutalized, this fellow? You understand why? Police quickly okay. grabbing the man behind the see, wheel see, of the white see. truck after it crashed into a plant nursery across the street. Retired firefighter David Banter says the truck was right in front of him. Now, again, um, brethren, listen, certain one of those things, I have no comment, but we have to talk about this here, man. We have to talk about uh, this. So over here, we already see what's in the background here. Um, uh, brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike, uh, give me what's happening in uh, uh, the, what, what's got your your attention on the left side of the screen. What number did they catch your attention? Now, look at this dude. This this guy is supposed to be a firefighter, a retired firefighter. That's why, you know, people that do things like this, they carry a bunch of spirit with them, man. Now, you have to understand, brethren. Listen, I have nothing against tattoo or people that have tattoo. This is not my problem. But there are certain tattoos that people have. They say a lot about them. They say a lot about their spirit. Okay, through, through this, you're going to read this guy's spirit through his appearance. I was behind a vehicle and it revved up and just took off and struck people. Went to try... Then again, always have a Negro there. Always out there. He, he's, he's nobody. Those are the police and stuff. Uh, firefighter. There you go, a Negro there. Okay? Uh, shirtless and trying to save life. Okay? Have the Negro play the hero. Uh, help the one guy that was bleeding from the head. So, uh, rendered first aid. Or did what I could. Both males were transported to Broward Health Medical Center, where one was later pronounced deceased. The other male remains at Broward Health Medical Center and is expected to survive. 
Fort Lauderdale Mayor Dean Trentalis witnessed the horrifying scene. It's terrible. They're laying on the ground. This is clearly a terrorist act against the LGBT community. Well, how? He, he's one of you guys. Okay, he's one, of, he, he's one of you guys. If anything, this is a hate crime. Like I said, brothers, they have a, a, a epidemic in their community of people running over each other. Okay, some dude went over there. And then that person got lost and he went to a bar, they are playing music, they are drinking and then he stopped playing music and drinking. And one of those guys came in and hit on that fellow and like, oh, yo, what the hell? I'm not that man. Wait, is that what that is? Let me get the hell out of this bar then. Okay, there are tourists, they go over there and they got lost. And then my business was involved a lot of tourists. My business was mainly tourism when I was doing my business uh, uh, back then. And I have a lot of tourist brothers that come specifically for this area. And a lot of them got lost in this area. Okay, if you refuse those guys, they'll make sure you, you don't survive. Or if they find out like you are one of the co-worker or one of their employee, and then you accidentally saw them in a place like this, they're gonna make sure you don't say anything at work. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, man. Those cowboys, those guys, well, they are cowboys, man. They shoot you in the back, you know. When, when I say shoot, I really mean like, you know, hurt you. Not in that way. This is disgusting. This is, we're fearful of our lives. We don't know what's going on in the rest of the street. It just didn't look like he was here to uh, have a parade. He was here to cause trouble. You could see it in his face. You could see when they pulled him out, when they threw him into the car and, and, and took him away. So take a listen here and take a look at this statement we just received from the president of the Fort Lauderdale Gay Men's Chorus, Justin Knight. It reads, and I quote, Our thoughts and prayers are with those affected by the tragic accident that occurred when the Stonewall Pride Parade was just getting started. Our fellow chorus members were those injured, and the driver was also a part of the chorus family. You heard that? So he was one of them. And then he went over there and did this thing. All right. So this is the Heavenly Father moving to the uh, to this. And you've been seeing Wilton Manor being in the news for a while now. You know, it's something always happening in there. Bridget, those people think they are stealing their blessing. And they're going to go out there and celebrate and do all kind of things. The Heavenly Father say, no, you're not in your blessing anymore. And you can't do these things anymore. Even the so-called two-third. But before we move on to this, let us check Genesis 15, verse uh, um, 14. All right? Uh, verse 13, we are and verse 13, okay? Whoops. And he said unto Abram, No of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land, that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for a hundred years and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance we are in genesis 15 verse 14 that is why you see all those things are happening let's check more people with cars running into others is that thing even recording Yes, it is. All right. Six people are hurt after a vehicle plows into a group gathered in the Bronx. Now police are searching for the driver. CBS News' Christina Fan joins us live from the Claremont section with more. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Cindy. We learned that all six victims were inside the park for a family gathering. They had just moved their belongings onto the sidewalk when a Jeep came barreling up the street, hitting them. You can see debris scattered everywhere. The Jeep was just towed away. The family believes the crash was deliberate and that there were two people inside the car, a driver and passenger, when they jumped the curb near Sheridan Avenue and East 170th Street just before 3 this morning, injuring six people, all of them rushed to Lincoln Hospital. One of the victims, a woman, suffered serious trauma and is in critical condition. You can see the massive response by police and paramedics as they treated those injured while searching for the driver and passenger of the Jeep who took off on foot. Here's how a witness described the chaos. It was way too quick. I couldn't really see. I couldn't really tell what happened. 
But all I can say is a car sped up to hit us. I don't know why. Again, uh, a lot of uh, things are happening, Bridget, and those people are, are unaware. They don't know why. <clears throat> Some of them do know. <clears throat> and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it, it's confusing to them. It's okay, well, we were just trying to get, uh, you know, having some fun. And uh, next thing you know, some dude in the car or some woman in the car came in and then do this to us. The victim's family says following the crash, they actually grabbed both the driver and passenger, holding them for police, but shots rang out nearby. They believe those shots were directed towards them to scare them into releasing the driver, which they ended up doing. We did see a shell casing next to an evidence marker, but police say they are still looking into whether or not the shooting was connected to the crash. So far, no arrests have been made. Yeah, so the Bronx is crazy. A lot of things crazy. Those people trying to have some gathering and celebrating it. They don't get the memo. Father says enough. It is done. We are now learning the victims' names in the latest outbreak of gun violence. WGN's Rob Sneed is live in Englewood with the very latest. Rob. Good evening to you. I'm live at the police station right now, just a few blocks away from where the shooting occurred on South Morgan Street. Now, a legal help firm is reporting that uh, Denise Mathis, 32 years old, is one of the victims, as well as 28-year-old Rantanya Rogers, 34-year-old Blake Lee. As you can see, Bridget, those are the gang gang crowd. Those are the, um, you know, turn up crowd. Those are the people that, hey, man, I don't care what it is. I don't care what's going on out there. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to party. I'm going to... I don't care. I'm, don't, I'm living my life. Mind your own business. Okay? And then you're going to... Uh, brothers, uh, finish watching the video. You're going to understand why this thing happened. All right? Lee and 19-year-old Shemitria Williams. Now, today, Shemitria's father uh, spoke with me. He said that his daughter has a two-year-old daughter, and this is just devastating. My granddaughter is two years old, and then she got to grow up without her mama. Okay, this is plague number one. Sorrow. Okay, this this woman right there is in sorrow, and then it's plague number four. Okay, uh, plague number nine, execution by the sword, all right? The tears haven't stopped as this grieving family embraces each other and remembers 19-year-old Shemitria Williams. Her father looks at old pictures from when she was a little girl. You know, I never lost anyone, a child. I know how it feels now. I understand what people go through now. You know, you know it's, just, it's just senseless. You know, why? Why did this have to happen? Because our people do not listen. And I have no doubt those are our people. Okay? They do not listen. You talk to them, you, you try to explain things to them, they simply do not care. They simply don't, and they don't want to come to the father. They rejected the father, so father rejecting them. You know, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. Police say three women and one man were killed. Four other people hurt. Williams' family said they called various hospitals and Williams is not listed as a patient. Her father, Demetrius Williams, says she was supposed to graduate from Country Club Hills Tech and Trade Center today. Why did this have to happen? At a press conference today, Superintendent David Brown said a two-year-old girl was in the home at the time of the shooting, but she was not hurt. We have a drum magazine, which is a large capacity uh, magazine for a gun, not a gun, several casings inside the house, no apparent uh, forced entry inside the house uh, at this point. And at last check, no one is in custody for these shootings. Again, and they are District 7, uh, Chicago Police, you know, perfection, they are the perfect destruction, okay? So the part, the house that they were, it's a it's a party house, okay? It's a party house. They have party all the time over there. Some somewhat, some way, something happened, and then somebody got shot and killed. Reporting live in Englewood, Rob Sneed, WGN News. WGN investigates discovered the Englewood home where today's shooting occurred has drawn scrutiny from the city as recently as last year. Mm -hmm. In March of last year, attorneys for the city's law department accused the building's owner of turning a blind eye to illegal activity within that home. And the owner of this home is a cop. 
is a police officer. He know, he knew what's going on, what was happening, and just he, he let just let it happen. Okay, he let the gang gang crowd go over there, and then he get his cut. Alleging violations of the city's drug and gang house ordinance. City officials say another shooting occurred in the home in November of 2019, also during a large gathering. One man was wounded in that incident. The owner of the building could not be reached for comment. He is a cop, okay? He is a cop. That's what happened. One person is dead and two others are injured after a triple shooting in the city's Strawberry Mansion neighborhood. Officers were called to the 1700 block of North 27th Street at around 2.30 this morning. They found a man in his 20s shot five times. He did not survive. Officers say a 24-year-old man is in critical condition after he was shot in his lower back. A woman suffered a graze wound to her shoulder. As of now, there is no word on a possible motive or arrest. And this is the third triple shooting just this weekend in the city. Yeah, just yesterday, two separate shootings happening in West Philadelphia within hours of one another and just a few blocks apart. One case involving a child. That second shooting happening during a graduation party. Act now, beloved, uh, you can see this. Uh, all those things are happening during celebration, during a, a party, during a celebration. It should tell the people like, yo, the most I is peace. It's just are you guys acting like you never watch the news. You guys acting like you don't have social, social media. They know what's going on. They simply don't care. Action News reporter Katie Catro has the details. It's a lot of a lot of shell casings from two shooters. Police say at least 50 shots were fired into a crowd of about 30 people celebrating a high school graduation. Police say two gunmen came around the corner at 59th and Lansdowne Avenue, striking three people attending the party just before 730 PM. Naturally, you have a family that is gathering to celebrate the advancement of one of their kids having graduated high school and they have to suffer this. Police were already in the area because of a triple shooting earlier in the day, about four blocks away at 55th and Lansdowne Avenue, taking the lives of two men in their early 20s and injuring a three year old boy just before 2.30 p.m. I heard like eight shots go off. Police say the three year old is expected to survive, but neighbors are outraged. A child was caught in the crossfire. I want them to know what I feel, how hard and passionate I am about those children, period. Don't interrupt them. They need to grow. I see stuff like this, but not like this. It is a difference with a baby. Robert Parker says he rushed to try to save one of the men who died. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> first of all, this sister name is Anaya. <laughs> Anaya Williams. Okay, so this is the two third man. Uh, I mean, I'm not talking about the sister. I'm talking about the dudes. You know, hey, hey man, it's just, Bridget. Listen, I'm not. I'm sorry, man. Certain one of those things. You know, it, it's just. This is crazy, man. Okay, this is like a way too crazy. You know, it's just they they see it like this. Listen to what the sister said. Okay. Listen to what the sister say. Period. Don't interrupt them. They need to grow. I see stuff like this, but not like this. Not like this. It is a difference with a baby. Robert Parker you know? says he rushed to try to save one of the men who died. It's a shame that the day before Father's Day, I have to put my hand on the neck injury of a young man. So those are the people that celebrated Father's Day and all that stuff. And, uh, and uh, again, this thing going to stay with the brother for a while. Is going to stay with the brother for a while because there are certain things you're not supposed to see with your fleshly eyes, but he did saw that. Um, that was shot. Police Commissioner Danielle Outlaw did comment on the three-year-old being shot, calling it senseless. There's no word on if these two shootings are connected at this point. However, police say they do have one person of interest that they are questioning at this point. Yeah. So you see the sword is cleaving, man. This is the sword is this is the thing they reported in the news, brothers. You know, those people look like us. They are reporting that. There are certain like horrible things that's going with them. Like it's to to us, it's mainly like a target. Like somebody say something in a party, somebody got pissed off, and they start shooting each other. 
with them it's random some do just randomly go out there and shooting people and just a block away from that crash scene, also in Humboldt Park, two people were ambushed and shot, leaving a 24-year-old man dead and a 25-year-old woman critically injured. Chicago police say they were shot near Division in Kedzie around 9.15 last night. The man died and the woman is now in the hospital. Police are looking for the people who shot. Beloved, when we pray, When we ask the Most High to send the spirit of division, the spirit of confusion, the spirit of madness upon the enemy, you always leave clues in there. That's why they showed you here Division Street, okay? All praises to the Mosa. Got them, but admit they don't have more details to go on because the woman is currently too injured to talk. <laughs> Division Street. We can't make this up. We turn now to Oregon, where authorities are desperately searching for a killer accused of going on a rampage. Police in the North Bend area say the man may be responsible for the deaths of at least three people at different locations. Tonight, they're calling him armed and dangerous. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw. Tonight, an urgent manhunt underway in Oregon for a man authorities believe is behind a triple killing spree. Officials releasing these images saying the suspect is armed and dangerous. Police believe the rampage started when the man allegedly ran over a couple with a white Dodge pickup truck at an RV campground in North Bend Friday morning. 74-year-old Anthony Oyster killed his 73-year-old wife Linda in critical condition. Police finding another man dead in his trailer. Minutes later, authorities responding to a shooting at a marijuana dispensary. Were this is what happened. To us, brothers, we know there are a certain crowd. If we stay away from them, we should be good. The two-third crowd, the parties, the nightclubs, if we stay away from those places, we stay in our house, we go to work, we do what we're supposed to do, get our food, we're good. That's for us. But to those people, it's so random. Can you imagine you just sitting in your house? Or you go ahead and getting some marijuana. Or to you just sitting in your camp or your RV just enjoying the vacation. And some dude just breaking in there and shoot you. Can you believe you going out there with your wife and you're driving and stuff. Some guy come out of nowhere and did this. Police found 47 year old Jennifer Davidson dead. Tonight officers frantically trying to identify the suspect and the motive. Police blocking off major roads in the hunt for the killer, eventually finding the pickup on a nearby highway, crashed and set on fire. Officers say the suspect purchasing more ammo before vanishing. We have a witness that indicates that the person that was driving this pickup truck got out of the truck, appeared to be armed with a handgun, and then disappeared or ran into the woods or the brush nearby. Zareen Shah is joining us now, and Zareen, Authority is desperately trying to track the suspect down tonight. You're learning more about the investigation. That's right. With police warning anyone who sees the suspect to stay far away and call 911 immediately. They also don't know if he had any connection to the victims before this attack. Wit. All right, Zareen, thank you. So, yeah, and to them, it's random. They don't know where. They can go to a public or the Mac. They can even sit in their side, inside of their own house and somebody coming over there and blast them off. To them, they don't have to stay home. Whether they stay home, they'll get it. They go in the street, they'll get it. Wherever they go, they'll get it. Bow and Costco parking lot here, just south of 836 off 79th here. And what I can tell you is there was a female sergeant from the Miami-Dade Police Department patrolling this area when a Home Depot employee walked up to her, said that someone had been stealing items. She saw the man, he was pushing a cart full of merchandise from the store. When the sergeant tried approaching him though, he took off at a run and jumped into the passenger seat 
of a two-door black Honda vehicle and there was a woman driving that car. They began driving toward the sergeant. She, fearing for her life, fired her weapon, was able to get out of the way. And it does. Garbage. Trash. To the highest order. Somebody drive over towards you, get out of the freaking way. Get out of the way, man. You don't pull your gun and shoot them. Get out of the way, but hey, it is what it is. Man. Does appear that right now she is fine. The two people inside that car, unclear where they are. They did take off out of this parking lot. But again, at this point, no injuries reported. I can tell you the- Plague number five, destruction by the sword, okay? A lot is going on, Bridget. A frightening and deadly ordeal that police say may have been a case of road rage. Hmm. Investigators say a dirt bike rider shot and killed a 37-year-old man in West Philadelphia. They say the fatal shots were fired after a group of riders pursued the victim as he drove his car. Action News reporter Annie McCormick live outside Southwest Detectives. And Annie, that was just one incident in a very violent stretch last night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brian, that's right. It was a violent night in this city in that particular case that you're talking about. We actually obtained new surveillance video that you're about to see that shows the brazen shooting that turned into a homicide that happened at 630 in the evening, still in broad daylight. Surveillance video obtained by 6ABC shows the moment a gunman on a dirt bike fired shots into this vehicle wow. you see parked at 52nd and Gerard. Then he returns, firing several more times directly into the driver's side. Police say this unfolded around 6.30 last night. In the car, a 37-year-old man was fatally shot. Information on hmm. the scene based from the witnesses uh, include that this is possibly a road rage incident we're not certain of that the investigation is still ongoing there you go you know there you go people are taking people out man just a simple road rage and boom boom we're following breaking news out of downtown police say three people were shot and one of them has died the police chief says a man on a bike and a man in a car started shooting at each other on Main Street at Pierce, three people at a homeless camp in that area got caught in the crossfire and were hit. One man died. Right now, police are searching for the suspects and reviewing surveillance video in that. All braces to the most high, man. There's so much going on. People on bikes shooting at each other. Drivers shooting at a motorcycle rider. Motorcycle shooting back. It's all, it's crazy. But hey, it's the sword father unleashed. Cleave the sword in the midst of them, man person okay so it's not going to happen uh, I, you would think well, let me just uh this fellow let me go because i don't want to copy the brother um <clears throat> video because i believe if you do that he's aware of that he might strike my channel so i don't want to um i don't want to appear disrespectful to the beloved brother it's just this story i have to bring it to the to the nation and you got this gentleman right here and people always assume because this guy is black you know he's one of us okay now you got this fellow he was trying to perform a citizen arrest and then he got shot and killed all right so what happened is uh somebody he was in the store and somebody said that you know somebody two people were shoplifting he pulled his gun on them and tried to arrest them for the police he was trying to help the store and the police and the police there's an off-duty officer that wasn't there that wasn't that was working you know he came in he saw him pulling the gun on the people and then he didn't even tell him anything they say he said drop the gun but he didn't tell him anything he then he shot and killed him okay when we told our people stay out of it something illegal is happening around you in the, in the market, this is not your business, man. You just let it go. But this guy was trying to be a cop and stuff like that, you know, and he he got killed. Hmm. That's what it is. When you don't mind your own business and you want to be a hero, try to save Whitey, this is what happened in the hospital in critical condition. One child was also taken to the hospital. Let's go to WGN's Mike Lowe. He just arrived at the scene and joins us with more. Mike. 
Ben and Gaynor, what we can tell you right now is the scene is still active, and I'm going to step out of the frame right now so you can see what's happening. Authorities have essentially finished their investigation of the area here in the Wrightwood neighborhood on 79th Street in between Washtenaw and Fairfield. What you're looking at right now is a white car that is being loaded onto a tow truck. That car is at the center of this investigation. Police say they arrived here at the scene at around 3 o'clock this afternoon to find a 25-year-old woman had been shot in the head. Another man inside of that vehicle had suffered a gunshot wound to the back. He was taken in critical condition to Christ Hospital, and as Ben mentioned, there was also a child in that car who was said to be unharmed. He was also taken to Christ Hospital just for observation. Right now, Chicago police are trying to piece together exactly what led to all of this. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. A Pierce County man is behind bars tonight, accused of shooting a man, tying him to the hitch of his truck, and then dragging him through a field, killing him. So this is Michael Scott Campbell. According to court documents, he says he woke up to find a man under his truck trying to steal his catalytic converter early Saturday morning. He says he shot the man twice, tied him to the truck, and dragged him. Yeah, so uh, you saw this multiple times. We saw those catalytic converters. <laughs> Oh man, we saw that guy. There was a there was a video we saw last month. This dude, he got he got he got caught stealing some catalytic converter. You know? <laughs> they were chasing him. He was chasing them with a gun. He fired a couple of shots, and then he returned back. And while he was trying to get in this car, he slipped, and then he fall. Oh man, the whole thing was so comical, and then the dude run after the um the car, and then try to uh, <laughs> he tried to get in the car. So that's what happened. Does this guy find a dude trying to steal his stuff? He just yeah, get that guy tied up and drag him and kill him. Most likely, that's not what happened. But hey, man, all praises to the Most High, right? Helping tonight, a store employee accused of stealing money from his family business was shot and then beaten by relatives. That's according to Houston police. Our Jacob Rascone is live on the scene tonight along Mangum and West 34th Street. That's in Northwest Houston. Jacob, what more do you know right now? Chris, police say in addition to shooting and beating one of their own, he, they shot a second victim, a bystander, who happened to be inside, who then ran outside and called police. Police say when a man stole something from inside the convenience store, employees pulled out a gun and shot him. A bystander was also hit and ran outside to call 911. They found an adult male. He had a graze wound to the arm. The man told officers about the other guy who was shot and still inside. Once they got inside the store and started checking, they looked in the back room. They found an adult male back there with a gunshot wound to the leg. Officers say the employees who shot the thief were in the back room with him, beating him. <laughs> The deadbeat relative, man. The deadbeat relative, brother. This is way too good. Let, let me let, let me let this <laughs> let me let this play. <laughs> this is horrible, man. He just hey, listen. When you shot, first of all, you know the fellow. You shot him, and then you are beating him, man. On top of that, man. Like wow, how much of a deadbeat that guy is, man. Like for real. And that the thief was also an employee. Two males that were beating the third male up suspected that that male was involved in some internal theft, some disturbance. That when he was, when he was shot, and he was taken into the back room where they continued to assault him. <laughs> they shot the fellow, man. Then they took him to the back room and beat the spirit out of him, man. Like, why? Right? Why? You already shot the guy, man. That means this dude was doing some horrible things, man. Some horrible things. Okay, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on here. Is he the guy? Is he related to them, or what's going on here? Are they? Are they? Are they uh, this is this is weird. Let me see. Police say that they will offer to the DA or recommend charges including assault and kidnapping as well. Of course, it'll be up to the DA to decide. Live in West Houston, I'm Jacob Rest. <laughs> 
okay, uh, okay. This good. This dude name is Jacob. Okay, they got a dude named Jacob. Uh, uh, report the news, which that's what Jacob is doing right now. Report the news. This is way too funny. I have no. I'm so. I'm. I'm very confused. What's? Let, let's watch this again. Helping tonight, a store employee accused of stealing money from his family business was shot and then beaten by relatives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, brothers. I'm sorry. Oh. oh, man. Okay. All right. This is exactly what I thought it is. This guy, he's related to the people. I mean, how bad is this, man? This this kid or whoever he is, this, this man, he's related to, to his people. This is a family business. Okay, he went in there, he, he's an employee, yet he was stealing things, and then his family caught him, they shot him in the leg, they dragged his ass in the back room, and they beat the spirit out of him. They beat the siblings out of this guy. This, this It's just the way they report the news, man. It's just like, listen, man, listen. Helping tonight, a store employee accused of stealing money from his family business was shot and then beaten by relatives. That's according to Houston police. Our Jacob Rascone is live on the scene tonight along Mangum and West 34th Street. That's in Northwest Houston. Jacob, what more do you know right now? Chris, police say in addition to shooting and beating one of their own, he, they shot a second victim, a bystander, happened to be inside. Who they <sighs> this, oh, the most high is grand, man. Like, he, oh, this guy was working for them. He was working with them. The guy is one of them. Yet, they shot him. They brought him in the back. <laughs> and then they beat the spit out of that guy, man. <laughs> All right, Bridget, I have enough, man. Let's move to the next video, man. Is that thing even recording, man? Ah, it is, it is, it is. How my dad, too, who's live uh, to... Uh Looking live at San Francisco, it's happened again. An Asian resident attacked in broad daylight. The latest victim, a 94-year-old woman. KPI X5's Betty Yu has been digging into this story all night long and has new information about the suspect and the victim. Betty? Liz, I spoke with the victim's niece who spent the evening with her aunt in the hospital where she remains at this hour recovering from her stab wounds. She says that her aunt asked her why something like this would happen to her. This is 94-year-old Ann Taylor, also known as Pang. She's the victim in what police say was an unprovoked attack this morning on Post Street near Leavenworth. Her family says she was stabbed straight through her wrist and hit in the head. She also suffered minor stab wounds in her torso. I visit with her once, twice a week. We hang out. It's just it's just sad that someone would be so such a monster and so cruel. KPI X5 obtained this photo of the suspect from a law enforcement source. So and you see now the Moabites are catching hell and you see how uh, a lot of people are just for no reason to just walk up to them and then and, and assault them. That's because of the spirit the most I released out there. Live in Sandy Springs for us at this hour, where the city just voted to amend its zoning code. So what does that mean in the city, Ashley? Well, Tracy, all of this really began a few years ago. You may remember back in 2019, there was a huge mansion party down Northland Drive here behind me. And since then, city leaders have really been trying to crack down on this issue. It's still an issue and it's just gotten worse. Partying in the city of Sandy Springs just got a bit more risky. Tuesday, city leaders voted to ban commercial parties in residential areas. Breaking the rules could now land you behind bars for six months. We've had com continual complaints about neighbors about these large parties that are rented out, where a house is rented out and, and uh, promoters are charging these fees and they go from like $10 to $600 to attend these parties. In 2019, the Tycoon Mansion Party in Sandy Springs made national headlines. The event brought out hundreds of people, including A-list celebrities. There so that's what happened. So, and again, that's what our people do. And it's a party thing. And 
now they are cracking on this because it's too much. It's party, party. And it's not, they're not cracking because of the party. They're cracking because of black folks. That's what they are seeing. Too many of you fools in our neighborhood. That's what they are doing because, uh, hey man, listen, too many Negroes over there and they're cracking on them. So that's what that is. And you know how people want to do this. That's all they want to do. Party, party, party. And then when they get in age, this woman, now all she want to do a party. Women like her party, party, party. And then when they get to a certain age, they're like, okay. It's time for me to get myself a good man and get married and raise children. So, that's what that is, man. Okay? All praises. All praises to the most. Man. Okay? All praises. So, this is Hish getting back at it, taking out Ishmael. So, we have no comment, brothers. Just enjoy the sweet boom of this. All praises to the Most High. Stay out of it. Left them um, <clears throat> taking care of business, man. UAPT Cecil Hannibal live in North Jackson. And Cecil, tell us what you're seeing this evening. Yeah, we're at JPD headquarters right now and neighbors were shocked because they didn't hear anything, not a single gunshot. But JPD says a man was shot and killed around 1.30 this afternoon in broad daylight. Take a look at this video. This was just about two hours ago. You can see the Jackson Police Department investigating its 65th homicide this year with 66 total homicides in the capital city. JPD tells us this started with some type of altercation between at least two other men. The family living directly next to the crime scene was shocked because they say they didn't hear anything until police arrived and are heartbroken to hear about another homicide. It was just awful. Somebody in a lost their child to a sense of killing, another sense of killing. Now, JPD says the suspects were seen leaving the vehicle driving a dark colored SUV. The make and model of that vehicle is unknown at this time, and the identity of that victim has not been released yet as investigators work to notify his family. Yeah, um, a lot's going on, man. A lot of people are being finding dead in argument. The way those people used to do things is not working anymore, man. The most I is sweeping them off the land. It is part of a escalating rise in aggravated assaults all across Atlanta. 11 Live's Doug Richards live in Buckhead, putting this into perspective for us, Doug. And historically, of course, Buckhead has gotten a lot of attention from folks who are shopping and folks who want to eat in its restaurants and just because of its sheer affluence. But it also is getting some undue attention from criminals, according to crime statistics. I don't know what's going on. People getting held up at gunpoint. It's a grim crime scorecard no neighborhood would want. Stealing catalytic converters in broad daylight. I'd never go to Lenox Mall. Never ever? No, not, not now. <laughs> okay, so the Mosa is making it very uncomfortable to them. Back then, brothers, things like that used to happen in the hood and people really do not care. They really didn't care about it because it happened in the hood. As long as you stay on the side of the ley lines, I'm all right. Now, they are stealing the catalytic converter, Akon, a car got stolen, and some dude, he was working and then he got shot uh, in, in the belly. And a bunch of things are happening over there. That, that fellow went to that quote-unquote Asian massage things and then popped eight people and all that stuff. Hey man, things is real over there. Lenox right? is a focal point for the flow of crime now targeting Buckhead. A security guard in the mall shot over the weekend and two teenagers arrested. Hmm. I mean, I have many times over the years, but I don't go there anymore because I think it's dangerous. Crime stats posted by Atlanta police show a surge in crime citywide, but a larger surge in Buckhead since last year. Robberies citywide are up 2%, but in Buckhead are up 39%. You heard that? Citywide, it's 2%. And Buckhead is 39%. So that means it's 37 times more than uh, the, the citywide. That means in the whole Atlanta. Okay, and Buckhead is supposed to be an affluent area, a rich area. And then now you got this through last week. 
Aggravated assaults are up 26 percent citywide, but up 52 percent in Buckhead. Modern Larceny Bible. from automobiles up 27 percent citywide, up 40 percent in Buckhead. We've heard a lot of big talk for a really long time, and now we're hearing more that a mayoral campaign is on its way. Amber and, Connor uh, is a Buckhead activist and skeptic of police promises to attack the crime rate. Whatever yeah. they're doing is not working? That's because there's nothing they can do about it because a lot of those things that are happening over there, it's them doing it. It's their own people. Well, you want them to shoot you? You want them to shoot people like you? No, they, 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 they don't do that. Hasn't been working, and I'm really tired of being sold a bill of goods that uh, no one's able to cash that check. Even right here, we've had some car break-ins. Chris Grossman runs the Chastain, a restaurant named for the park in Buckhead's West End. He clings to the hope that the crime spike will run its course. It seems like it goes in waves. Um, you know, hopefully this is just kind of another wave and it's we'll see a downtrend soon. Mm, well, okay. All right. Well, you know, hey, man. So it's a wave, you know, just like the, the Vivid out there. So it goes in wave, wave, okay. One stat that kind of opened my eyes was about burglaries. Citywide, burglaries are actually down during this time period we're talking about by 42%. Hmm. And in Buckhead, uh, they are down 56%. Hmm. One uh, bright spot in uh, uh, an otherwise pretty grim story. Back to you. Okay. Doug, thank you. Atlanta has seen that unusual spike in violent crimes over the course of the last year. Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant is working to bring those numbers down. He has now launched APD's summer crime plan. None of this garbage will work. All right, this dude, he just walk up to this Asian woman and punch her in the face and then call her names and all that, you know. All right, so <clears throat> she didn't even provoke him. Okay, those are the spirit the most I release. Man. She didn't say anything to him. He just walked over there. He, he could have turned, oh, he could have turned south, south really, really bad. Okay, um, so he just punched uh, this uh, this woman. She just walking. She didn't say anything to him. He just punched her. Okay, and now the so-called Asian, they are seeing that. Uh, the, the, the Moabites are seeing the Edomites are going out of them and knocking them out and killing them for no reason. Okay, they never said anything about that. You, you never see the so-called uh, uh, AWA, Asian with Attitudes, walking around there and patrolling and questioning this guy because this guy is not their target. And then you see how their stuff is being unsuccessful. This woman just walk up there minding her own business, brothers. She didn't do anything. Because she's just walking, and then these do coming over there and then punch her. Okay? I right, because this thing has music on it, I don't want to, you know, uh, play it. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, Turkish stuff anyway, so. <laughs> All right. All right, okay. I don't know this brother, man. I don't know this brother, but... You know, he, he, the, you can, you can clearly see, you know, this brother, you know, he doesn't play, man. Okay. This brother says straight up, hey, man, hey, <laughs> they, they lucky, man. The police didn't get them. I was about to pull something on them. It would have been, that, that would have been another story. Okay. He's a licensed carry where, you know, this guy tell you straight up, man, you know, things would have been going the other way south. All right. All praises to the most high, man. Thank you, Erica. A crime tracker alert tonight as well. A high speed chase at 120 miles per hour ends in a gun being drawn and an off duty officer put behind bars accused of road rage. This all happened Sunday evening in Rutherford County, starting on I-24 near Murfreesboro. News 2's Valencia Wicker takes us to the scene. He had only been on the job for a few months when road rage essentially cost him his job. This is the street where investigators say former officer Ward chased down the victim and threatened him with his handgun. Hmm. 911, what's the actual emergency? Okay. I'm on Shiloh Stay out the Medical of Center. There's a guy the with a gun in. drawn right here in a Holiday Inn. He's pointing at a man. He's Just screaming at him right now. Witnesses okay, caught much of the gunner. Sunday night exchange on camera. 31 year old Matthew Ward, a then off duty officer for Deckard Police. Hmm. He's seen pulling a gun on a driver. Investigators are calling it an act of road rage. It is. Okay, so that's, I mean, if this dude was black, 
If this dude was somewhere around the color black, he would have shot him dead. And the people that was there say, yeah, he was um, the black guy tried to rob him. And then, you know, uh, he tried to uh, take his gun away. So he was fear for his life. So, and that guy said, why you pull up this gun on me? I'm on arm and stuff like that and things. But hey, man, that's what those people do. So, uh, you know, stay out of it, beloved brothers and sisters. Don't get involved. All right, let's pull up more video. And just like that, we're back in the second part. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can because in like an hour, and uh, I'm going to do this and pause it in an hour. I will do the the call in, the show. Um, I already have this, uh, you know, there. Uh, in one hour, I will... Uh, come over there and then do this so uh i got this there uh what's the name of it oh duty call in all right so i um i will do this and then i'm trying to do this as fast as i can okay all right so um this uh, fellow fellow christopher demon hacked asian uh, woman you know in pieces so I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not a hate crime. And uh, those are news that they are hiding. And again, I never really uh, checked the brother. I never profiled the brothers. Again, like I told you, I don't like to do that. I don't like to do uh, the... <clears throat> Except for the beloved sister, Lisa Cabrera. I do. So I, I copy. Well, I comment on their video because certain people, when you do that, you know, there is a rage and you, they can strike you if they want. So... I like this fellow hacked up a uh, Asian roommate. So, let us move to the next video, okay? All right. Riddled with bullet holes and broken windows, the post office in Center City was left riddled with bullet holes and broken windows. Mm -hmm. This morning, police say they're searching for three men they believe are responsible for that shooting right there along Chestnut Street. Hmm. Investigators say a shootout happened around 1230 this morning between one man outside the post office and several others that were in a car. At least four bullets hit that building with employees still inside at the time. Thankfully, no one was hurt. All, All praises to the most. I plague number five destruction. Destruction by the sword. OK, uh, the most is moving through the earth. I'm Tony Aiello in Westport, Connecticut. Police in this well-to-do suburb 50 miles north of Times Square are saying very little about what happened in the $2 million home behind me yes. located at 1 Lindale Park. Because what, hap because what happened over there, they really don't want the, the, the people to know how many of them. When it comes to us, the police will say, oh, this happened, that happened, this happened, you know. Yeah, it's the usual suspect, the jogger, you know, it's them and stuff. But when it comes to them, they want to tell them as little as they can. Responders were on the scene all night after a 911 call brought them here around 4 p.m. Thursday. Cops found an adult female dead. Yeah. They searched the home and found a seven-year-old also deceased. Hmm. We've confirmed the victims are mother and, and daughter. daughter. Court documents show a woman who lived here was fighting an eviction attempt being pursued by the father of her two children. Okay, two million dollar house, uh, a well suburb, they were going to be evicted. Something happened here, you know, she ain't leaving. Something happened. We do not know. Police are not offering any details about names or any information regarding the cause and manner of death. Neighbors say this home was always beautifully decorated around course, the holidays and in the warm weather months, they would sometimes yeah. see two girls setting up a lemonade stand. Okay, so that's what that is. Uh, during the holidays, those people like to celebrate. Now you understand why the Heavenly Father did this. Again, a woman okay. and her seven-year-old daughter found dead at a home in Westport, Connecticut. The circumstances under investigation. All right, so the beloved brother Abdullah Sia is in Connecticut. So um, they're not saying anything. That's how they show you, like, when it comes to their people, they really don't want you to know, hey, 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 it's happening to you. You alone. You, not, not me. Don't say anything about me, man. You know, and stuff like that. Don't, 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 show, don't say anything about my people, but they, they are. mystery in Mississippi where authorities are investigating the death of a former state representative, the body of 40-year-old Ashley Henley, 
was found shot Sunday night in the same location where Henley's sister-in-law was found dead back in December. So what the hell is going on there, man? What's, what's going on here? Is this a coincidence? What's going on here? You tell me. Uh, NBC News Now correspondent Maura Barrett joins me now from Water Valley, Mississippi. Maura, good to see you. Um, Ashley Henley was a Republican state representative from 2016 mm -hmm. to 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. She was killed outside a burned out trail or the same property that I just mentioned where her sister-in-law was found dead just months ago. What else do we know about this? It's a very confusing, bizarre turn of events, Yasmin. She was actually found shot in the back of the head. She actually had a gun on her possession. It was still in the holster. Uh, it's safety on. So it suggests that she didn't even know what was coming. She was working to clean up the property where her sister-in-law was living. Uh, they had had a memorial set up there because her and her husband believed that the sheriff's office here wasn't doing enough to get answers uh, about the sister-in-law's death. Here, though, today, six months after uh, the sister in law's death and now a week out nearly a week after ashley's uh we still don't have any answers any arrests or any that's the thing they never had any answer any arrest Just mind your own business we don't know what happened and stuff there's no crime in our neighborhood what about them negroes over there what about them any leads in the case the sheriff's office uh neglecting to respond to any comments here today as we've, we've been working to get inside multiple times to get some of those answers the family not getting any answers either so they're expressing doubt in, in making sure that anyone will be held accountable Yasmin. so let's talk about the family you actually spoke with henley's husband this afternoon what did he tell you about his wife in the investigation into her death and the death of his sister well, obviously, he's extremely heartbroken, but he's also so frustrated and really doubtful that the sheriff's office would even care about his sister-in-law or his sister's death uh, and, until he, he said that they didn't express much interest until uh, his wife was killed as well, her death being investigated now um, as a homicide. But I want you to hear directly from him. He spoke about who his wife was and what exactly he thinks happened. She spent her life serving. Like, she was an educator. She worked two jobs full-time put herself through college to get a master's degree anyway we don't care about her credential we care about who did this who is this guy the husband former husband anyway man a lot of things is going on with those people and they are not talking about it you don't see this like in uh functions but you know they kind of like keep it oh, what's going on here shut the hell up you know let's move to the next video man nine do see here and an 18-year-old woman were killed when their small plane crashed into the St. Mary's River. This is a look at the recovery operation, a look from Sky 4. People waiting to board a ferry saw the plane in distress, and by the time they called 911, that plane had nosedived into the water. And we also just learned the NTSB is on its way to the scene to yeah. investigate. Yeah. News for Jack's reporter Jim Piggott has been on the river following this all day. And Jim, you just got new information about the two people on board. That's right, I'm here on the St. Mary's River here in St. Mary's, Georgia, and rescue crews have left at scene, but the wreckage is still out there. What we understand, the two people on board, as you'd mentioned, an 18-year-old student pilot and her instructor, who we were told at the time that this was gonna be one of his last instructions of what they were doing. Wow. They took off from the airport in Fernandina Beach from a flight school and uh, in a Cessna 150. And as you can see here with Sky 4 video, you can see the wreckage in the St. Mary's River here and, and what had happened and rescue crews coming out doing what they can. But we are told that they were able to recover those <clears throat> two bodies. <clears throat> now, as you had mentioned as well, this is also the area where the ferry goes out to Cumberland Island. And yep. people were boarding that ferry as when they saw this mishap. Take a listen to what this one man saw when he watched that plane go down. We were just standing waiting on the ferry. <clears throat> Noticed the plane, maybe two, three hundred feet up, and he was diving. And we thought he was doing a maneuver or something, but just went straight, straight into the water. Yeah, so that's what happened, man. When the father switched the ley line, they thought he was doing a, a maneuver, and boom, that's what happened. Okay. So a lot of those things are happening, brothers, and this is not 
Um, this is not a random, okay? This is not random, okay? Let's uh, do this before 8 o'clock. To share with you a tremendous loss for the ABC 15 family as we learn that Christopher Sign has passed away. He spent more than a decade with us here in the Valley, and tonight we remember our colleague and our friend. Hello, friends. I'm Christopher Sign. Have a look at your weekend traffic restrictions and alerts. Christopher Sign wore many hats, and while many of you got to know him as a TV anchor, others knew him as a father, a husband, a University of Alabama football player, a friend. He was a good man. He was the kind of guy completely devoted to his faith, his country, his family. He was so happy and madly in love with his wife, Laura. And I remember the first time that he became a father at ABC 15, how thrilled and excited he was, how humbled he was by the responsibility of becoming a dad. As a teammate, Chris didn't have many peers at all. He was a consummate pro. Chris will tell you that he played little football in college, played in the trenches, played O-line. But when we sent Chris out on his... Now, again, I don't know what happened to this guy, but anytime you see things like this, brothers, anytime you see people saying this guy was a former football player and uh, he used to do great things and stuff, and then he got married and then he got kids and then he'd start acting up and then he tried to live the former life. I don't know what happened to him. Is he, was he sick or something like that? This was just what was sent to us by a sister. And then, you know, things like that happened, man. And this dude got, uh, you know, he got, he died. Oh, uh, he got Harkazine. Oh, uh, he told the truth. Let me see. The guy stated his family has been received numerous credible death threat after breaking the tarmac story. Uh, and winds up committing suicide, leaving his wife and kids without protection. He has no history of mental illness or depression. Has a well, he told the truth. That's the price you. That's the price you pay. Okay, when you tell the truth. Okay, well, that's the price you say you pay. Bro, okay, when you tell the truth, that is why uh, the people they really don't want to tell them anything that's going on out there. Keep them. Not a rug. Keep, keep them very docile. Keep them in their meekness. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so he tells some truth. Not quite sure what it is. I don't want to um <clears throat> uh, dive in that, but he said something. Okay. I think this guy. They say he crossed the the kill the the Clinton. He got he got himself kill a real journalist he knew what he was doing and he caused that arkansas line he had courage i salute him so yeah okay so i don't know what happened to this guy but he's no longer here so he committed the uh, stuff and then he's not here man so that's what happened that's why they don't want to tell anybody the truth out there because things like that will happen all right then and was found dismembered 24 hours after a man was found dismembered and identified by authorities, family members are sharing their heartbreak after learning their loved one was murdered. Good evening, everyone. I'm Karen Scullin. That is our top story tonight. Fox 9's Mary McGuire spoke with those close to Adam Johnson today and joins us live with their message for the public. Mary? Well, Karen, today I spoke with the mother of Johnson's four-year-old son. She asked that we simply refer to her as JoJo to protect her privacy and safety. She tells me she wants justice now and is asking for anyone with information on this case to come forward. Behind the gruesome and shocking headlines is a man JoJo says was a valuable part of her family. He would always... No matter what he was doing, he would always try and have fun. She shared a young son with Adam Johnson. The 36-year-old man police have identified after discovering several severed body parts on Thursday morning in northeast Minneapolis. How do you tell a four-year-old? JoJo says Johnson was a father of three and had struggled with homelessness and mental health issues. It's something that he has struggled with his whole life. Yeah, so um, you see the curse is cleaving onto those people. There are so many stuff going on, brothers. You know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to try to not to focus on main, uh, like a little local news like this. Uh, the beloved sister Mama Ruak, uh, she sent me very good news, like local stuff. I would appreciate if the sister would send me more local news. Like if brothers, if you see something happen locally in your local news, and your if it happened on TV, try to find it out on the on the uh, uh, on the internet and send it to us. We need local stuff. What's going on in your area? What's going on around your area? What's going on in other local area that you know? Because things like that, we need to bring it into the nation front line and tell the people the plague is cleaving, man. She says his mental health played a role in his numerous run-ins with law enforcement, but doesn't think they had anything to do with his murder. When he's not at his greatest, yeah, he, you know, has gotten in trouble. I don't think his past had anything to do with what happened to him. I beg the differ. All right, let's uh, go ahead and uh, take the next video. A man broke into a... Breaking news. Police say a man broke into a Harris County deputy's home and started shooting, hitting his wife and four-year-old stepdaughter. Houston police think they are going to be okay. Thank God. HPD says the break-in happened just after 2 o'clock this morning at an apartment on West Dallas and Columbia Street. HPD believed that the shooter was hiding in an apartment and after a brief SWAT standoff, found that apartment empty. So far, no motive. We will keep you posted. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. Of a deadly shooting on Milwaukee's east side, continuing a violent start, as you can see, to the weekend. Hmm. There have been at least eight shootings since Friday afternoon, the latest happening near Farwell and Lafayette. That's where Fox 6's Amelia Jones is live with what we've just learned about the investigation. Gabrielle, we know that a 21 year old woman is in the hospital in critical condition after a 25 year old man shot her and then turned the gun on himself. We're seeing that crews, they are just finishing cleaning up the scene here, but there was a shattered glass everywhere and they towed away a car. This is just the latest shooting, as you mentioned, in a string of violence happening from Friday afternoon up until this evening. Multiple people injured and two others killed. Lafayette and Farwell, the latest shooting police responding to in 24 hours. Between Friday afternoon and Saturday night, shots rang out in the Milwaukee area in six other locations. The first Friday afternoon around 1, an 18-year-old was shot at 7th and Keefe. Around 10 p.m., a 20-year-old woman was shot at 20th and Kimberly. 11.30 p.m., a 9-year-old got a minor gunshot wound at 40th and Center. At 1.40 a.m., a 31-year-old man was shot and killed at Water and Knapp. At 2.35 a.m., an MPD officer was shot at at 39th and Garfield. He was not injured and a 31 year old man was arrested and at 545 a.m. A 51 year old man was shot and killed at 37th and Hopkins. In general, do you feel safe in the city? No. Raven Edwards is with her family getting tacos at the food truck at the corner of Water and Knapp, the scene of a fatal shooting early Saturday morning. We're out here walking specifically for the kids and that something like that could happen. Yeah, it's kind of scary. To know that the violence hits close to home for Edwards. I have a friend who's lost two kids to gun violence. Um, she just lost a daughter at the beginning of this year um, to, you know, gun violence. Edwards says something needs to change. I think there needs to be more things um, geared for the kids to do or more activities, something to keep them occupied and bring them to the Mosai. Bring them to the Mosai, not. Not uh, 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 activities, bring them to the most high, surrender them into the most high, and then things will be all right. In 30 hours, brothers, eight shooting. This is no joke, man. 30 hours, eight shooting. The, 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 it's cleaving. All right. The road woman is dead. Police believe it is tied to road rage. This is impossible to comprehend. It is. Hmm. The cruelty over this, Doraville police have identified the victim as 25-year-old Carmen Lee. This shooting happened Memorial Day weekend. Doraville officers responded to a call of a man who had shot, had his car shot at. During the investigation, they found Lee's vehicle and pronounced her dead. Police do not have any suspects. They don't know the derivation of any of this, except that she is gone. The woman is dead. <laughs> All praises the most. High. Let me stop here. And then uh, prepare for the uh, the 
podcast after that i'll come back and finish this let's see it's 7 46 should be back on like 10 11 and just like that we back with more videos um 12 53 a.m boy uh, you won't believe it man i had to uh do the podcast and uh <laughs> Uh, drive the family around a bunch of things man anyway so we back now after five hours so let, let us uh, keep on moving we have new information tonight about that deadly mass shooting at oakland's lake Merritt last night seven people shot one is dead nbc bay area's christy smith spoke with police as well as people who were in the area about how it happened the aftermath was posted online after shots were fired at Lake Merritt. We spoke with a man who didn't want to appear on camera, but was there and grateful he was not hurt. I was just sitting there watching the geese go by on Lake Merritt and then bam, pop, 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 pop. This guy rode up on a motorcycle and it was just crazy. He took cover. Others got out of the way of the crowd that was running. I didn't want to be trampled, so I actually ducked behind the porta potty over there. Oakland what the hell was that? Is that Vin Diesel? Wow. If this is hitting rock bottom means I'd, I don't want to hit rock bottom. <coughs> this dude looks just like Vin Diesel. Anybody got that in the comment? Let me see. Hmm. Uh-huh. Hmm. 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 Beloved, am I losing my mind here? This guy looks just like Vin Diesel. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm doing this. Vin Diesel. According to Wikipedia, Mark Sinclair, known professionally as Vin Diesel, is an American actor and filmmaker. Okay, Mark Sinclair, that's his true name. But this dude... Uh, that guy looked just like Vin Diesel. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, the dude looked just like Vin Diesel, man. You, you, you gotta be kidding me, man. That guy looks straight like Vin Diesel, man. Wow. Run Mike. Is that Iron Mike? Is that... Wait. This dude is wearing a shirt, say, Iron Mike? Oh, you... Wait, let me see this. This is, this is crazy. Let me see. Cover. Others got out of the way of the crowd that was running. I didn't want to be trampled. Yes. He wore a shirt wearing, say, Iron Mike, a.k.a. Uh, Mike Tyson, okay? Dude, like, like is it the most I sending also? A message to this? Let me see. Iron Mike. Okay. Mike Tyson, Bridget. Okay. We were talking just about uh, uh, talking to Mike Tyson. We were talking about Mike Tyson and his connection with the Dove or Dove and the Holy Spirit and all that. You need to watch this video. So Mike Tyson, you know, his name is Michael Dyson. Okay. The Archangel Michael Dyson. I'm like God, you know, Michael and stuff like that. Mike Tyson. And then now this dude have a shirt and saying, Iron Mike. It's the most I'm sending a message that we are going to beat people up or wh whatever that is. Let, let me see. Mike Tyson and Pigeon. Okay. Mike Tyson love Pigeon, man. We already went to this, you know. He loves them so much. Okay. Because, you know, he had a great connection with the Dove. And when he was a child, the Holy Spirit always been there for him. That was his message, okay? And then his message being delivered. So we went into all of this. But it's strange that this dude, I'm, I'm like this Vin Diesel-like fellow. Is that thing even recording? Look just like Vin Diesel wearing a shirt, say Iron Mike again. We were just talking about, we were just uh, talking about Mike, you know, a few days ago. Anyway, let us keep on moving, man. This is strange. So I actually ducked behind the porta potty over there. Oakland police say they were already sending units over to the area because of complaints of illegal traffic, fire hydrants blocked, and double parking. Then a chaotic scene as someone opened fire. A 22-year-old man was shot and killed. Six others shot and in stable condition. Keith Ali arrived after. Streets were blocked off. Cops, there were a lot of cops. Everybody was exiting this way. 
bunch of cars leaving in and out. There were 5,000 people and vendors who often work along Lakeshore Avenue. This time, investigators do not believe it is directly connected to Juneteenth. It's just unfortunate the shooting occurred on that day. Oh, yeah, no hitch. Um, yeah, whatever, man. So, um, <clears throat> wow, this is still strange to me. Anyway, rushing oh, to put out. Anyway, so I think we we're going to close with that, but let's see. Mm -mm. anyway brothers the ms is not they are not stopping and a lot of things are going on and the most high is growing. give the most high all praises and all glory beloved let's move to the next video woman is dead police believe it is tied to road rage this is impossible to comprehend it is the cruelty okay, over this doraville police I have I identified the victim as 25 year old carmen lee I think I already did this. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, a word rage incident. So let's move. I think I did this. At that person. Police say the woman who was the victim's mother collapsed and they ordered the suspect to drop his gun. And at that point, the suspect shoots at the officers, misses the officer and strikes the, uh, the police vehicle on the hood and the windshield. Police say the officer shot back at the suspect more than once and he ran back inside the house. He later came out and was rushed to the hospital in stable condition. Officers searched the home and found the suspect's girlfriend dead. KPRC spoke to the suspect's older sister, who says police has been to the home several times in the past. My brother had enough. Like, get My brother had enough. That's what happened. My brother had enough. She says her brother had been dealing with a lot. Both of them were doing the same thing, yeah. They were cheating on each other, and it just kind of came to a head today. It did. And at this hour, police have not said if the suspect shot his girlfriend or the mother first, her mother first, where their names have not been released at this hour. So you got this dude, something happened. He shot and killed the mother and her girlfriend shot at the police. They shot at him. He came out. He went to the hospital. Let me tell you something, brothers, sisters out there. When a man, especially a man that is not in the truth, when this man said he is going to kill you one day, that means he is going to do that. He's not bluffing. I know a lot of people, just like to you, man, if a woman say, I'm going to kill you one day, leave this woman immediately. When a man says he is going to kill you, uh, and in an argument, he says, I'm going to kill you one day. This is not him talking. This is a spirit that just hit him 100 miles an hour and it left him in the same moment. You don't stay with the man like this. You don't stay with the woman like that. And, well, the wife has a cousin. They get into argument all the time with her husband and the husband told her i'm going to choke you to death one day and she's like oh you think i'm scared of you and so for all up in his face and all every day and then that day come and she came in right in his face and like oh you think i'm scared you think what you said and then he just grabbed her by the throat and then he just pressed against her windpipe until her life gave her away he served less than 10 years in prison. That happened in 2000. He's been out like for over 11 years now. You see, this man, he, he claimed it. Well, there was a lot of things that happened and he claimed it was self-defense because she attacked him. We don't know. And he, he spent less than 10 years in prison. Uh, somewhere around like eight or nine years. He's out right now. He's been out since 2010 or 2013. This man is out, he's leaving, you are not. Why? Because, you know, everything is a joke. Everything is like, yo, you can't hurt me, I'm louder. And those men out there are very emotional. See, the sister was crying, say his brother has enough. His brother has enough. Well, her brother has enough, her brother has enough. That's because he had enough. It's a lot of things, brother. Let us move to the next. 
Surveillance cameras in the Bronx captured this dramatic moment when a suspect opened fire on a man standing near two children who tried to duck for cover. Today, New York City police are trying to track down that gunman behind yesterday's brazen attack. The 10-year-old girl and her younger brother miraculously were able to escape uninjured. The 24-year-old, who was the intended target, was shot in both legs and in the back, but is expected to recover. Yeah. You see that, you know, two third after another two third. This dude, you know, they already he run into those kids and then he fall and then he got shot. I told you. Anytime you see those scumbags standing in front of the store, they are up to no good. They are empty vessel, they got demon in them. They are up to no good. Just move and get away from them. Don't be thinking, oh, this brother's an angel. Is that, is that? No, that's not what that is. A lot of them, you can feel their energy. This morning, she saw that coyote lurking around this East Sacramento neighborhood on Santa Inez Way. She says she and her friend says that this was quite a startling sight to see this wild animal prancing around. A Sunday snapshot. This cell phone photo showing a coyote wandering around the streets of this wow. East Sacramento neighborhood. You can see it. Well, audioly speaking, that was very professional. Moving around the block, looking around underneath cars for anything in the area. The woman who took these photos tells me that they thought it was a lost dog, but it turned out to be the coyote. As you can see right now, Bridget, a lot of uh, coyote has been spotted in the neighborhood and over there in Florida. There's a video in, uh, in here, you will see this, in Florida and uh, all over. They are taking over the place. The Most High is uh, putting them in position. When this thing go down, they will go on them. Okay, all praises to the Most High. On a suspect under arrest tonight after crashing a stolen big rig into a home in Pomona. The damage was so extensive, the house is now unlivable. Police say the truck was stolen from a tire shop in Montclair. The owner followed the truck until police arrived. They say the suspect then lost control, plowing through power poles, parked cars, and eventually mm -hmm. into the side of that house. All oh, praises to the most <laughs> Crazy thing, crazy thing, man. Stay alone. It's led to protests this weekend over President Bolsonaro's approach. He refuses to back measures like social distancing. Angus Crawford reports. On a beach where Rio normally comes to play, a bleak memorial. 500 flowers to mark 500,000 deaths. So Brazil just uh, passed the 500,000 death, man, you know. Uh, and those people are not too happy with that fellow over there, the president, because he's just like a four-fifth, okay? And across this country still, the graveyards receive more of COVID's victims. Is it any wonder? Look at the crowded trains. No social distancing here, but many blame the government for allowing the virus to spread, yes. hoping for so-called herd immunity. That's exactly what they are wishing upon. They are wishing like they can, a group of people, they will just uh, uh, grow immunity to them. And you know who the group of those people they are wishing that uh, have immunity? Them. That's why that's why old man four fifth was one. Well, old man four fifth when he was president. That's what he wanted. He like yo because they always grow immunity to the plagues, and then they realize not this time. Okay. And you'll see, you, you'll understand, you'll see something. In India, they're going to tell you what's really going on in India. It's not stopping, brothers. They're just not reporting what's going on. And then again, I have no comments on this. It's just like me just talking crap, man, because we have no comment on that, all right? Let's move to the next. We have no comment. In rural areas that attacks COVID survivors, and it okay. kills half the people. Listen. To India now, where the country already ravaged by the virus is battling a new threat, an increase in cases of a rare infection known as black fungus. And hmm. They got black fungus, white fungus, yellow fungus, and then listen to what she's going to say. And that's targeting recovering COVID patients. CBS's Chris Livesay has the story from New Delhi. His name was Dal Chand Sagar, a bank teller, a father, and a COVID victim. His sons say the government is too busy to remove his body. Hmm. Only this charity will. It's horrible to think how long this person would have been left inside of their home to decay if it weren't for volunteers like these risking their lives. 
You know what's happening over there, brothers? No joke. When they suspected somebody have this uh, plague, they abandoned the person. They let the person there for days, months, and then after that, and then they come back, they just drag the rotten body out and they feed it to the dogs or they just throw it outside. They don't want to touch those things. It's a charity that doing this, brothers. Listen. To give them a proper cremation. Just one of the latest casualties in this country's battle with COVID. Since Cigar died at home rather than a hospital, he's not even included in the official death toll of more than 380,000. The real number could stretch into the millions. You heard that? The real numbers could stretch into the millions. Not a million, millions. The 300,000 or over, those are the people that they counted from the hospital. Those are the people they counted from the hospital version. Sistrin, most of those people, they die at home. They die at work. They die in the street. You saw the video, beloved brothers, that they left the, this guy dead in the car. A dog was eating his dead body, man. Those people acting like, oh, we reach herd immunity, nothing happened and stuff. When they told you right there, this thing could be in the millions. And we haven't uh, checked this thing for a while because they, they are messing with the numbers. They are messing with everything. And then uh, they, are <clears throat> they are hiding everything. So what they like to do, brothers, they like to come back later and tell you the, 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 the truth. Well, somewhat. They tell you what happened, okay? All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, black fungus crisis is still spreading okay now they are dealing with black fungus crisis today is the uh the 21st and then june 9th let me see the latest they had it was the 18th okay um <clears throat> excuse me 400 <clears throat> 400 and uh 8 000, all right okay so they again they they took off that thing so let's see what's going on here uh-huh oh, well Ah, oh, you see. Ah, oh, boy. There we go. Okay, USA thirty-four million, uh, over six hundred thousand and counting. Okay, India. Okay, thirty-nine, twenty-nine million eight hundred. You know, still counting. Okay, still counting. Still counting. Brazil half a million, still counting. France, Turkey, um, all those places, Virgin. Okay. So Haiti is still at 373. Last time it was like 300 and 371 or 51. Okay, 373. I saw an article. I was like, oh, Haiti is like, wow, people are dying in ambulance and oh, you can't get hair. And, oh, man. Just, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nah, this is what's going on over there. And if that wasn't bad enough, doctors are now seeing another disease, specifically hmm. in rural areas, that attacks COVID survivors. Hmm. And it kills half the people who get it. You heard that? it kill half of the people that get it that means 50 percent of the people that get it is gone out of 100 people 50 of them die out of 10 people five of them die that's like half of them it's not like they go they recover they, they just, just die okay it's called mycosis, a fungus found in soil dangerously prevalent where hygiene is lacking and deadly when a patient's immunity is weakened by coronavirus and the steroids used to treat the severely ill, says Dr. Chan Watel of New Delhi's Gangaram Hospital. A lot of mortality if left undiagnosed and untreated. Every hospital across the country is seeing these kind of cases. More than 28,000 Indians have contracted the infection, officials say. To save them, doctors commonly have to remove sinus tissue, even the eyes. Hmm. It's a huge shock to the family. Adding to the terror of a nation already suffering so much. Like Shad Hassan, whose mother is in critical condition with hmm. COVID, hoping this other disease won't prey upon her next. I'm telling you one thing, which is indeed very true. The world is going to end. <laughs> 
All praises to the most high. All praises. All praises. All praises to the most high. Oh, let me get a beat, man. Let me get a beat for this dude. Give me a second, Brett. Yeah, yeah, I, I got, got. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let me take the this thing. Out, 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 out. I got the beat now. <laughs> all right, let's see what this guy said again. All right, let's see. Let's hear what he said again. Son, whose mother is in <clears throat> critical condition with COVID, hoping this other disease won't prey upon her next. I'm telling you one thing, which is indeed very true. The world is going to end. Beloved, this man is frank here. Give our praises to the Most High. This man, he was shot in Berlin. Is that what that is? Berlin. Anybody got some information on that? Put it in the comment board and the uh, um, live. I believe Berlin means something in German, uh, some stuff like that. Probably there's a history in there. You know, it, it is no stranger that, you know, the Nazis, the Nazis, they want to end uh, ended the world. And, you know, Berlin is like over there. So uh, this guy, he, he told it from it from the heart. He said, which is indeed very true. Okay. Critical All condition right. <clears throat> with COVID, hoping this other disease won't prey upon her next i'm telling you one thing which is indeed very true the world is going to end yes sir that's because he knows this he understands this he know that their blessing is done their world is done that is why they feel it in their bone yeah all praises to the most i mean you know i like to give the most i praises to my holy song So I want to end Yeah, we can feel it in the bones <laughs> So I want to end But I want it in the soul The world is going to end We can feel it in the bones The world is going to end The blessing is ended this Elamite coming over then tell the truth. This Indian man telling you the world is going to end. That is because he know it. That is because he's in his soul. The most I put in in his heart to tell the truth. The Holy Spirit move upon him to tell the truth. What did the man say? What did he want to say? He just tells you that the world's going to end. The most I made him in the spirit. Yeah, to know it's the end of all the wars and the spirit. Yeah, that is the end. Yeah, all the wars and the spirit. Indeed, sir. Let me tell you this thing, which is very true. Indeed. At Hassan, whose mother is in critical condition with COVID, hmm. hoping this other disease won't prey upon her next. I'm telling you one thing, which is indeed very true. The world is going to end. Yes, sir. There's a sense of death that's just hmm. lingering across the country, oh, even please. at the holiest river, the Ganges. In several instances across the country, bodies have been washing up on its shore. B Bridget, you don't know how horrible, how disgusting that is. And we'll give the most of our praises and all glory because this sent plague number eight. We know that. Okay. This is plague number eight, Bridget. Okay. Pestilence. Pestilence. All right. And hunger will change the destruction. He sent pestilence upon them. He's destroying those people. Now, you know, India got over 1.2, 1.3 billion. That's understandable. That's a lot of people. You think, you think they only have like a few, like two, two, three hundred thousand. You think that's what that is. If those people don't have at least 10 million people that die from this, they, it's, you have to attack them yet. If the number could be in the millions, at least 10. 
Well, I'll put it on the right number, 12. Zaza! Brethren, let us keep on moving and give the most. Is that thing even recording? Uh, yes, it is. All right, all right. Let's give the most high praises and glory, man. And just into the newsroom, the victim from yesterday's stabbing in the loop has been identified as a Maryland graduate student. 31-year-old Anat Kimchi was stabbed in the back in broad daylight while walking in the 400 block of South Wacker Drive. Wow. The killer remains at large. Police believe that person may have tossed the murder weapon in. Beloved, uh, let, let the, what, what, what is, uh, can you type the number of the block where she was stabbing let, let, let me let me let me hear let me let you hear this again once you hear the number type it in the live chart in the comment board what was the number that she said and just into the newsroom the victim from yesterday's stabbing in the loop has been identified as a maryland graduate student 31 year old anat kimchi was stabbed in the back in broad daylight while walking in the 400 block of south wacker drive <laughs> all praises Bridget. all praises to the most size sister and put it in the comment board in the live chart the most size grand let's move in the killer remains at large police believe that person may have tossed the murder weapon into the chicago river kimchi was here on a personal matter the mm. university of maryland has released a statement tonight expressing condolences and calling her quote a notably accomplished scholar and remarkable woman hmm. yep in the back we begin tonight with a horrific tragedy in the wake of Tropical Storm Claudette. Ten people are dead and several injured after a fiery chain reaction 18 car crash in Alabama. New images are just coming in tonight. Nine of the ten victims were children. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, this was originally the, well, not originally. I wanted to make a, a new video because of this. When we tell you the most high is grand the most high is met destruction let us go ahead and let this video play we'll analyze brothers 10 dead after 18 car crash on alabama uh, alabama highway all praises to the most high ley lines many traveling in a van from a girl's ranch that seeks to help vulnerable children huh. cody fox and his nine-month-old daughter were also killed roads were Regent. 10 people die this guy was the only adult the number of the children that die is nine children die beloved for those of you who know in the comment board in the live chart type what the meaning <coughs> of the word <coughs> excuse me of the number nine nine children die 18 car one plus eight equals nine this little girl is nine months old how are you making this up how are you making this up 10 dead step number 10 michael is in the mist switch the michael line 18 car one plus eight nine destruction nine kids die destruction this little girl is nine months old destruction how could you make this up brothers and sisters is that thing even recording beloved brothers and sisters <laughs> yes it is all right let us move in and give the most high praises okay listen brethren in a van from a girl's ranch that seeks to help vulnerable children Cody Fox and his nine month old daughter were also killed. Nine months old. This thing only had one survivor. One woman survived. Roads were slick in the area. Fish That's not what that is, it's the ley line, but anyway. She'll say one of the cars appeared to hydroplane, and we have late word that the NTSB is sending a team of 10 investigators. ABC's Elwin Lopez leads us off tonight from Montgomery, Alabama. Tonight, authorities investigating a horrific pileup crash in Alabama that killed 10 people, including nine children. 18 vehicles slamming into each other on Interstate 65 near Montgomery on Saturday, some bursting into flames. It's very tragic. Officials say two 18 wheelers likely setting off the chain. Re two 18 wheelers. 
first 18 wheelers one plus eight for the eight for the first 18 wheelers equal nine destruction let, 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 let me do this brothers this is the most high is grand he's showing you how he's destroying those people calculator <clears throat> beloved 18 wheeler got 18 wheels one plus eight equal nine destruction that's the first 18 wheeler let's take the other 18 wheeler 18 one plus eight equal nine destruction now let's take both 18 wheeler 18 wheeler nine plus nine equal 18 one plus eight again one plus eight equal nine two 18 wheeler nine nine destruction little girl nine months old how many kids that die nine of them how are you sitting there and not giving the most high praises and glory beloved brothers and sisters the most high is grand we are serving a magnificent god and they, those people we pray for them for not getting the message beloved listen define grand oh not grand day but oh. according to miriam webster a define special grand. celebration held to mark the open here's the definition of grand Magnificent and imposing in appearance, size, or style. That's the most I style. He's, he's imposing, he's grand. He could have easily tell those people, yo, I'm going to destroy you guys and stuff like that. He sent two 18-wheeler. One plus one, nine. For each of them, you add those two nine equals 18, 18. One plus eight, nine. Nine children die. One of them was nine months old beloved brothers and sisters if this is not the most high i have no idea what that is <laughs> magnificent imposing impressing ah inspiring splendid brethren when you have the Holy Spirit, when the most I open your eyes, the others can see this, you know, they, they're like, oh my God, the lances and, oh, what a tragedy, what an awful tragedy and stuff. They can see it. They are blind because you pray against them to be blind. Beloved, let, let us, on, let us uh, finish, man. Let us finish. Reaction crash. The county coroner saying a car likely hydroplane on rain slicked roads That's not as what tropical that is. storm Claudette moved through the southeast okay there's a tropical storm named claudette all right <laughs> i'm not quite sure what claudette mean but anyway authorities tonight identifying two of the victims 29 year old cody fox <laughs> this dude he's 29 29 his daughter he's nine months old Two eighteen will learn nine, nine, nine kids that how could you not see this? How are you gonna say, Oh, this is random? Oh yeah, whatever. And his nine month old daughter, Ariana, also hmm. killed eight children between the ages of four and seventeen. Hmm. They were riding in a van from the Tallapoosa County Girls Ranch. Hmm. So um let me see. Uh they that's like a, a little ranch. Let me see the name of it. Alabama Shaves Girls, um, Ranch established and girls ranch that's what they call it huh 1973 huh. okay well all right only girls ranch a home that seeks to help at-risk children they were involved in a horrific accident yeah. um that that words can't explain it we had um Eight fatalities and one survivor. Plague number one. Sorrow. This man is under a lot of sorrow right there. Okay? Bystanders rushing in, rescuing that sole survivor identified as Kansas Gully. They were not able to get to the children due to the intensity of the heat. So, plague number two. Fiery conflagration. And the ley line switch, those kids, they burnt to death. 
the smoke and the flames. Yes. Gully losing two of her own children, including a four-year-old. This is such a tragedy. It's a tragedy not only for our ranches. It's uh, not only a tragedy for Alabama. It's a national tragedy. You know what that, brothers, do you know where that happened? Good old Alabama. Give the most our praises. While well, you guys used to lynch our people and burn them to death, and then now what was going on here? You used to throw our children in Ala Alabama uh, uh, River, you know, to uh, alligator for bait. And look what happened to your children now. Now you lost two of your own. This is how it feel. All right? This is how it feel. This is all the most size wrath. Michael Smith, the CEO of the Alabama Sheriff's Youth Ranches, had just visited the group in Gulf Shores during their beach vacation. They all wrote me little sticky notes and... <clears throat> oh, hmm. Put these sticky notes over my office saying how they look forward to me being down there and, and being together. They were on their way back when the van crashed. I'm so happy that I was able to spend time with them this week. Um, mm. I, I can't tell you what it meant to me. And and I just know in my heart that it meant something to them. The sticky notes on the notepad, just a heartbreaking, devastating story unfolding there in Alabama. Mm. Ellen Lopez joins us now from outside of the hospital in Montgomery. Yeah, so all praises to the most high, beloved brothers and sisters. He did this, all right? We give him all praises and all credits, and may his name, may, his, may the king rule forever, all right? That's what that is. Chicago's Puerto Rican Day Parade drew out hundreds to Humboldt Park this weekend. But for one man, the celebrations were cut short. He was killed in a shooting last night. Nate Rogers is live in Humboldt Park with more. Nate. That's right, Don and Corey. In fact, I just got off the phone with the victim's family within the last hour. He tells me they had planned to spend just a short time at yesterday's parade before the unthinkable happened. A warning to our viewers, the video ahead is a bit graphic and may be hard to watch. My heart is destroyed. That was my best friend, my brother. A grieving brother tonight working to make sense of violence now shattering the life of one of his own. The shooting happened here in the 3200 block of West Division around 9 p.m. Saturday. Here's pod cam video of the horrific altercation. Remember that video that we saw earlier, earlier in Division? Okay, look at this. Two thirds, a bunch of dudes got it the together. The brother who didn't want to be identified says his brother had rear ended a parked car. After that, a group of up to six men inside of that car jumped out, started attacking them, and also throwing up gang signs. Yeah, whatever. We saw, if you watch the video, you watch everybody dock, they just dock at, at the same time. That means one of them f inside fire something. PM Saturday. Watch them. Here's podcast okay. video of the horrific Look at them. Look at the guys. Okay, you watch all, all of them just dock. They just duck because they hear the sounds. They shot at them first. The brother who didn't okay. want to be identified. Okay, they docked. Okay, they docked. That means somebody shot at them. Okay, and then they says run. his brother had rear ended boom, a boom, parked boom, car. Boom. That has nothing to do with parked car. That's some gang hish. Somebody take revenge right there. After that, a group of up to six men inside of that car jumped out, started attacking them, and also throwing up gang signs. It's a gang thing, okay? This is a gang thing. All praises to the most high, man. Let's move in. We turn now to Oregon, where authorities are desperately searching for a killer accused of going on a rampage. Police in the North Bend area say the man may be responsible for... Uh, did I did this? It felt like I did that. It felt like I did this. I don't know, but... Anyway, it, 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 won't, it won't hurt if I do it again. For the deaths of at least three people at different locations. Tonight, they're calling him armed and dangerous. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw. Tonight, an urgent manhunt underway in Oregon for a man authorities believe is behind a triple killing spree. Officials releasing these images saying the suspect is armed and dangerous. Police believe the rampage started when the man allegedly ran over a couple with a white Dodge pickup truck at an RV campground in North Bend Friday morning. 74-year-old Anthony Oyster killed his 73-year-old wife Linda in critical condition. I, thought, I think I had done this before, but anyway, uh, it, it, it won't hurt to give the most high more glory and praises. Next video.
Supreme Judge Ibrahim Raisi All secured right. a landslide win in Iran's presidential election on Saturday. This dude. <laughs> this dude, man. This is, yo. This guy is new, uh, is new Iranian president. His name is Ibrahim. <laughs> the guy name is Ibrahim the Butcher. Beloved, that guy name is Ibrahim the Butcher. Abraham the Butcher. Abraham the Butcher. <laughs> this is way too good. How come those people cannot see this? Man? The 10 plagues of the apocalypse of Abraham, aka Abraham. Define Abraham. Here's a summary from Wikipedia. But the name means father of many in Hebrew, which is the original language of the name. Ibrahim is the Arabic name of the prophet and patriarch Abraham and one of Allah's messengers in the Quran. <laughs> Ibrahim, Abraham, Abraham. <laughs> All praises to the Most High, man. The dude name is Abraham. Ibrahim. All praises to the Most High, man. All praises. We gotta give the Most High all praises, man. Four hundred. Also, new this old. morning, a Good Samaritan's car is stolen while he's in the middle of helping the victims of a car crash on the city's south side. Eight people were taken to the hospital. Two of them in serious condition. A dozen first responders arrived, helping the eight people injured in the crash. At least one of the people involved in the crash was a teenager, but was able to walk to the ambulance on his own. Now, before all. <laughs> oh man mind your own business man stay out of it stay 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 out of it i don't know what this number mean if you add them and this ambulance right here i'm not quite sure what that means but anyway you, you you do the math now, before all of that, a good Samaritan, Jerry Bobo, saw what happened and decided to help. He says his own car was stolen while he was trying to do the right thing. So I pulled over my vehicle, hopped out, and I helped the woman, um, and me and this other man helped the woman out of the car. And as I'm going, just check on my vehicle, my vehicle is gone. So my car just got stolen while I was trying to render aid on the scene. You shouldn't be such a Bobo. I'm not making fun of the brother, man. Just, you know, just saying, like, man, mind your own business, man. Mind your own business. You're not a cop. You're not a firefighter. Something like that happened, man. You call the police, and then you, you just leave. There's nothing I can do else, man. You're risking not somebody stole your car, man. Good Samaritan. We keep telling you those Samaritans were horrible people, man. Only one of them did something good. Whatever, dog. A moped crash in Brooklyn leaves two people critically hurt. Police say a man and a woman were riding on a moped when a truck rear-ended them, throwing them from the vehicle. Mm. It happened around 10 o'clock this morning on Rogers Avenue in Crown Heights. Yeah, so um, you see that a lot lately. A lot of people on moped getting run over. A lot of people on moped are running people over. All braces to the, the bullseye. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me mute this, so... Elephants trash, farmers' crop has migrating herd travels across China. And people don't know this, well, we keep, uh, we keep uh, an eye on those elephants. We know it's spiritual, okay? They don't just travel for 500 miles like this because, oh, you know, they just walk. Mm -mm. An elephant never forgets. They know where they're coming from, and then they know where they are going. How many of them are there is here? Um, not quite sure. They look like they blended with the rock, so I might make a mistake here. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of them. Okay. All right. I, I believe this is better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen little elephant. Wait, is it thirteen or? <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. No, it's not thirteen, it's twelve. It, they just it's 
they are blended somewhere around 12 or 13 elephant but for the lack of a better word it seems to me i count it i don't have a good eye you know they're 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 little ones and you really can't see them let me see oh boy this is big if i count it again one two uh three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen yes it's thirteen of them yeah they got a, they got little ones sometimes you don't see them okay thirteen elephant okay they're crossing the 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 thing and you know thirteen uh, the tribe is like you know it's, it's thirteen jacob has thirteen children he had twelve sons and a daughter dinah remember dinah okay so this is the most i doing all those things here okay and then they're just eating the crops anything like they find you know there's nothing you really can do against them because like yo you know they are they are just going places man you know okay 13 elephant each each one of them for the children of uh, uh jacob he had 13 kids all praises to the most high me good morning. That's the million dollar question, right? How did this vacant Houston landmark catch fire? Well, right now, investigators are trying to find out. We do know the flames burned here for well over an hour, decimating this building and giving firefighters a battle they won't soon forget. Overnight, smoke poured into the air after a fire ravaged the old firehouse saloon. <laughs> Imagine, this is the most I sense of humor, man. He sent the barrier in a house called Firehouse Saloon. This high warning. This is the most high sense of you. Once we got on scene, there were there were, it was heavy fire conditions, flames on, on this side, flames on the back side, and flames on the other side of it. It's safe to say there were flames just about everywhere, devouring this old Houston landmark. Hmm. The building isn't in use now, but back in its heyday, it was a popular honky tonk that had some big stars on its stage, including Tim McGraw, Blake Shelton, and Billy Bob Thornton. Hmm. But now, after flames raged through the building, it's left charred and dilapidated that's your blessing that's your kingdom you know back then you guys used to have stars and all that ah, thing is closed down years ago you know honky tonk what a name what does honky tonk mean please don't show me anything graphic let me see define honky tonk here's the definition of honky tonk informal a cheap or disreputable bar, club, or dance hall, typically where country music is played. Ah, a buck tooth grotesque hillbilly monster place. That's what that is. All right. Ragtime piano music. Yeah. Whatever, man. So let's move to the next video to be alive. DOT cameras record at the moment when Kelsey Gold crashed through an interstate ramp and literally flew off an overpass. Now, according to the report, she called her boyfriend instead of 911 and waited more than an hour and a half before a passerby even noticed the smashed car and then they notified police. The car was nearly demolished, but somehow the driver was found uninjured. Yeah, that's the stuff the, the brother was talking about, okay? Nose at nine. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, ley line. Yeah, uh-huh. Here in Mill Creek this afternoon. Just a few hours ago, this inferno could be seen from all over Salt Lake County. Utah Fire Authority says it took more than 60 firefighters to bring it under control. To give you a better idea, this happened at an apartment complex under construction at the corner of Brickyard Road and 1300 East. With first responders still on scene tonight, we have team coverage. First, Brian Schnee shares some of the terrifying moments for nearby businesses. Brian. Well, Bob and Kelly, just heartbreaking to speak with tenants who uh, ac actually occupied the adjacent building. It's a strip mall that featured about a dozen small businesses. <laughs> about a dozen small businesses. All right, all right. We like the number 12 anyway. Go ahead. What else? Many of them felt the heat of the flames, grabbed what they could, and took off. Hmm. By the time I got out of my building in just three or four minutes, the flames were 150 feet high. It was mm. so hot and intense, it turned off my cell phone because my phone thought it was too hot. I wish I could blame the red eyes on the smoke, but it's sad for me. 
<laughs> All praises to the one side. <laughs> Brethren, do you see the spirit of humbleness coming upon those people? Do you see from the little uh, Elamite fellow that say, I'm going to tell you something that is indeed true. The world is going to end. Can you see <clears throat> lately, brethren, the spirit of humbleness. The Mosa is humble, this dude. Humbling this dude. This fellow could have easily, he said it here, he could have easily blamed the red eye, but it's just like he's sad. Beloved, listen, listen to me. This is this face that you're looking at through your screen right now. Is this is the face of somebody that is ready to bring Jacob's trouble? Hmm? <clears throat> Brethren, sistren, in the comment board, in the live chart. Is this the face of someone that is being blessed right now? Is this the face of someone that is going through his blessing right now? Is this the face of someone that is ready to take over the world right now? Is this the face of someone that is ready to lead the world to a higher power? This is the face of sorrow. This is the face of dismay. This is the face of confusion. This is the face of confounded. This men is going through a plague a destruction he's not ready to bring any jacob's trouble to any of the mosai's children listen to what he just said brothers watch this the flames were 150 feet high it was so hot and intense it turned off my cell phone the flame it, it, by the time he tried, look at that beautiful woman right there, man. But the barrier doesn't play. The flame was so hot that it turned off his cell phone, brethren. The flame was so hot, it turned off his phone. That means the phone thought it was too hot, it automatically shut down so it would so it won't explode. <sighs> and then look at this dude. Look, listen to what he's saying because my phone thought it was too hot. I wish I could blame the red eyes on the smoke, but it's sad for me. Beloved, I want you to, to take out this man. You know what? I must see if I can um, put this guy in. And the, whoa, I'm gonna see if I can put this guy in a thumbnail. Let me see. Let me see. There you go. Give me a second. All right, I'm gonna see if I can put this guy in a thumbnail. But anyway, man. Yeah. It was pretty chaotic. Everybody really started running. We weren't. Sh I mean, it felt it was the heat was so intense already from the fire that everybody was just we didn't grab anything is this the face of pride is this the face of happiness is this the face of somebody that is ready to go to the kingdom Is this the face of confidence? This is the face of confusion. We just ran. 
This video was taken by Cami after she got out of the building. Her staff and clients all made it out of the salon safely. They, along with nearly a dozen other tenants in that building, are waiting to see what happens next for their business. Now, most of the fire itself was on the apartment property, but some of that strip mall with the pharmacy and salon did receive damage from the, flow, fl from the flames and likely from water and smoke as well. Just a traumatizing night for those who had to run from those intense flames. Flames and smoke that could be seen all across the valley tonight. John Franke joining us live now with a closer look at what down, what went down here in Mill Creek earlier this evening. John. Anyway, beloved, you got the message. The Mosai is humbling these people, man. Those and eight restaurants across our area have been cited due to the presence of flies. This as a restaurant in Delray Beach just reopened today after they decided to close their doors because the flies would not stop bugging the customers. Mm -hmm. It was becoming too much of a burden, mm -hmm. whereas a manager, you know, it was uh, embarrassing to go up to a table and having them swat their, you know, their face because of the flies. Ocean One Bar and Grill at Delray Marketplace was overrun with flies late last month. Hmm. It disrupted our business. Over the last three weeks, the restaurant installed screens, added more fans, and put in bug zappers on the fans and lights. It's, it's amazing. It's just amazing those people want to see what's going on here. They don't understand what's happening here. Well, because, you know, we're all praying against them, and uh, they don't know exactly what's going on because we did pray against them, and we told them straight up, the plagues are upon you, man. And the father's sending all kind of pestilences in the midst of you. You, you. you mean to tell me you don't know why this is happening? The managers were excited to reopen today. You know, serving the community is everything to us. And we started getting a big bad rap from, you know, the flies that were not our problem. But we had to handle it. So I'm very happy. As far as stopping them from coming into an area, as what happened with uh, the marketplace, that's very difficult to do. Edward Sherwin of the company Food Safety and Inspection Services, which helps restaurants develop plans to comply with all state health standards, says while the situation at Delray Marketplace was unavoidable due to environmental factors, there are a few steps restaurants can take, but he says cleanliness is paramount. It's very important for proprietors to be proactive. That's not what that is. You can clean as much as you want. You cannot clean out the Mosai plague. All praises to the Mosai. We didn't even know their home was on fire. That is until two people who were in the right place at the right time sprang into action. Fox 46's Maureen Wirtz is live near Lake Wiley tonight. Maureen, this is quite the extraordinary story. Absolutely, Lindsay. Well, the home behind me caught on fire in just a couple of minutes, and I spoke with the people who live here who told me they had no idea their house was on fire until someone came knocking. Wait, this girl looked very familiar. Was it the same woman that came in and gave us about that fire that happened in those four houses by lightning? Yeah, she seems very familiar. I don't know why. She she's somehow she's been at all the firing place. Anyway, whatever. Let's let's go ahead. The days can be pretty typical for Rashad Conwell, a word he uses to describe himself. I'm so quiet and laid back. I, I, I didn't expect all this. I just thought I did what anybody else would do. But ask anyone in this neighborhood near Lake Wiley, and they tell you what Rashad did on Wednesday isn't ordinary. So I rushed to the door, knocked. She came to the door like, hey, how are you? I was like, how are you? Your house is on fire. Grabbing the woman and a child from the home, Rashad says it took only minutes for the back of the house to catch on fire. We didn't grab shoes, we didn't grab phones, we didn't grab anything. And that's where John just happened to be working. It was so hot, yeah, I got burns on my nose and on my face. That the flames were so hot as I just ran down the side of the driveway to get... Brethren and the spirit, it shows me something here. It shows me some stuff that happening with all those fires and the, the one thing that keep pop up is the intensity of the fire's heat it's the intensity the amplification of the thermal residue of this fire this is me talking here right there every single person who will say the fire got too hot it's just so hot well i mean it's of course it's fire but mm, Okay, then again, they have a brother come over there and save them. 
which he did good, brothers. He did all right. He did all right. There's a fire in the house. You know, you saw the fire, ma'am, your house on fire. And then you left, you do your job. But I think he went in there and tried to save them. All right, whatever, man. Get away from it. But it's not just Rashad who stopped to help. Randy Muhammad, who was working at a house nearby, saw the fire too. The garage is on fire. Mine? Yeah. Son. Hmm. Thank you. Look at this. That's what it is, brothers. You know, this guy did the right thing. Your garage is on fire. He left. Okay, he left. You know, some people would have just go ahead and mind their own business and gone. Okay, he did. That's what you're supposed to do if you're in a situation like this. I would not advise that because I'm not a firefighter. Things like that happen. Don't try to be a hero and go over there and try to save people and all. If they did knock on the door to tell us to get out, I would have been sitting in that room above the garage. John and his wife have lost their home of 10 years, huh. but they're grateful to both Rashad and Randy. That was the only thought was to get the people out. Two right. total strangers who decided to do the right thing, which often isn't so easy or so typical. This dude should have get a raise, but you know how they do brothers in the workplace. All praise is to the most high, man. Now, breaking news from CBS 17 News. Breaking news now at noon is the search for two missing family members after a deadly tubing accident continues. I'm Bill Young. And I'm Liz Ortiz. The search is happening in Rockingham County in the Dan River. So far, crews recovered the bodies of three people. Four were rescued and two still missing. The family of nine went tubing Wednesday night around 730. Family members were on three tubes when they went over the Duke Energy Dam in Eden. So far, four people have been rescued. A 14-year-old boy, his uncle, and two cousins. Michelle Wolf has the latest on the search. I'm on Highway 700, Fieldcrest Road, not far from the Draper boat ramp. Crews have asked that we all stay up here on the bridge to give them some space to work. A little bit ago, I checked in with Rodney Cates, Emergency Services Director for Rockingham County, and he tells me there's no sign of the missing tubers yet. Highway Patrol arrived out of Salisbury by helicopter to continue their search in the. Beloved, some of you already put it in the comment board, but. Um Again, the most I like to play games like this one. Searching. Search resumes after nine family members went over North Carolina Dam. Three dead, two still missing. So, the mo you see, now you've been seeing, brothers, they quite a lot of them accident. And uh, uh, next, uh, the, the, the previous video that we did, a couple of girls went, uh, um, they were in one of those, uh, uh, you know, boats and they got stuck right on the mouth of the dam. So now nine family, brethren, you know, they go and two being, I have no idea what that mean. Let me see. Uh, hopefully I don't get something disgusting like last time, man. Define tubing. Here's the definition of tubing, a length or lengths of metal, plastic, glass, etc., in tubular form. Okay, we need the second. The leisure activity of riding on water or snow on the large inflated inner tube. Okay, so the leisure. They were trying to enjoy the leisure. Define leisure. Here's the definition of leisure. Free time. Leisure. Free time. Use of free time. Opportunity. Enjoy the vacation. Enjoy the land. The most I say no. Sweep them off. All praises. 11 Alive News at 5 begins with breaking news. A birthday party ends in a shooting with the man they were celebrating killed and another man now in custody. This shooting bringing police to southwest Atlanta in apartment complex this afternoon. That's where we find Shanu Her live near Country Oaks Apartments on Fairburn Road. So Shanu, you've just learned more about how this shooting even happened. Yeah, I spoke to a neighbor who says she was here and they were celebrating the victim's birthday when an argument broke up between the victim and the suspect. Apparently, this all started over loud music. 
again 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 if you can see it put it in the comment board this is the most i easter egg you know i'm just i'm just saying you know what an easter egg is not telling you about the holiday please don't send me your email by oh big are you promoting the holiday no no you saw the easter egg put it in the comment board put it on the live chart and he's laid out in the breezeway right now dead angel mcwarder is distraught I always something so many people have died i heard it is on top of a graveyard she says she grew up with the man who you heard what she said brethren she says so many people have died it's like a top of a break a graveyard that means the sister know it. She understand this, okay? Was killed during his own birthday party at the Country Oaks Apartments in Southwest Atlanta. The old man was like, can you please cut your music down? And in the midst of him saying, can you please cut your music down? He went in the house and got a shotgun and shot him three times in front of his kid. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the other sister's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> The other sister like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to show my face. When I know them Negroes around here, man, they're going to say I snitch and all that. He shot him three times right in front of his children on his birthday. Wow. Atlanta police says the suspect they have in custody is between 55 to 65 years old. And the hmm. victim, who hasn't been named yet, is between 25 to 30. Lieutenant Daniel Jensen says when the officers got to the scene, hmm. the victim had already died. Yeah, whatever. So... Uh, you know, it's always a party, always a celebration, a gang gang party. I don't care. I'm going to do loud music and stuff. And Bridget, like I said, man, you want to celebrate something in your house? Fine, man. I Again, that's not me, man. But be respectful, man. Don't blast your music very loud and disturb the other people that live around you, man. Okay. Uh, somebody says something very, uh, very, um, hmm. somebody says something very, uh, 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 eye catching, you know, when that person that was very important. Let, let's watch. At that point, the officers were directed to a, a possible shooter. He was taken into custody without incident. Angel says what's even more heartbreaking the victim and suspect know each other and seemed to get along well. You heard that? You heard that? They get along well, they know each other. What did, what, how did they get along? The man that killed him, usually they was friends. They get along every day. They drink beer every day. They all hang out. So today was just a day. I guess he just got, you know, irritated or tired. But, I mean, I grew up out here. Okay. It's not like he got irritated and tired. That's the day the demon jumped in his body. When you're around drinking with a bunch of dudes and then uh, uh, always partying, gang, gang, lifestyle with a bunch of other scumbag, buck tooth, grotesque monsters, they are demon on them. They will jump on them. They will kill you. Okay? All praises to the most high, man. Next video. How, how long you are into this thing? Oh, wow. Okay, this is going to be too gig. And we begin with breaking news. WGN Investigates has learned that a veteran Chicago police officer owns the Inglewood home where eight people were shot, four of them fatally, early Tuesday. City and court records show that Chicago police officer Enrique Badillo bought the property in the 6200 block of South Morgan back in 2014. Badillo was hired by the police department in 1997. Mm -hmm. He's come under scrutiny from attorneys in the city's law department last year. Crooked cop, man. Scumbag, man. We begin tonight with that slashing inside the busy Times Square station during tonight's evening rush. The suspect who attacked him is still on the loose. CBS 2's Jessica Layton is in Times Square with the latest. A few hours into this investigation, police still aren't saying what they believe led to the attack. But we have just learned the 35-year-old victim is not being cooperative with the cops. Another slashing at a time the city is trying to welcome people back. When you hear things like that, brother, somebody got slashed, shot, beat, and they don't want to cooperate, that means that person know he's in the wrong. That means that person know if he or she cooperates, it's going to be worse for him or her. Some kind of drug deal went wrong. Something went south. Nobody want to have responsible. That's what that is, man. The city's latest subway slashing happened mere steps from live music inside the Times Square station. 
performers David Hincapi and Doi Shi were both caught off guard while trying to send commuters home on a happy note. I honestly just noticed um, that they were closing off the area and there was a lot of officers there. Out of the corner of his eye, Hincapi could see officers putting up crime scene tape and swarming the hallway leading to the NQRW platform, while other first responders tended to the victim who was slashed in the head. Okay, this guy didn't want to talk because he know what he did. All praises. A man who led one of the world's largest families died earlier this week. Zion Achana lived in Northeast India with his <clears throat> 39 wives, 94 children. I have no comments on that. Next video. Most beaches in Honeymoon Island, and scientists are predicting the blooms will continue moving north over the next four days. Their eyes in the sky caught a massive bloom about a mile and a half off the coast of northern Clearwater Beach. And it's about a 400 yard in diameter bloom out there. Now pieces will break off and, and things will happen, but you know, the red algae is a, that's a natural living organism. So it's feeding off of fish or anything it can, nutrient. And, and living out there. Gunter, who started his career as a garbage man 40 years ago, takes pride in the cleanup, no matter how smelly it might be. They pay in profit. I can't hear. <laughs> oh, praises, man. Oh, man. Yo, you guys, man. You... Ah, you reporters, man, you guys are doing the finest work out there, man. Uh, I don't know how you guys listen. Do, do they even watch the news? Do those guys even review their tape? They just they just upload things anyway. Let's 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 watch, man. Well, you know, uh, Linda, contractors like Gunter who were out here in 2018 say that they learned everything they know from that experience when it comes to these red tide cleanups where the in and out spots are for the beaches, what boats and equipment work best for cleanup of this size. Now, you got to remember, Linda, back in 2018, that red tide was so bad it cost the county $7 million and they had around 1,800 tons of dead fish. You could see the boats coming in. This is about the uh, 12th pickup, I would say, that they have done today. This is all garbage, just people up, uh, up, uh, feeding people, man. Like, oh, it's red time. So that has nothing to this, man. This is a plague the most I released. The ley line is switching. All praises. Uh, dressed quite oddly. He had a helmet on and um, uh, elbow and knee pads. And uh, the passenger right, so he was sitting right next this, to this is asking happened. extremely let's, let's, personal let's, questions. Let's watch, let's watch this. Okay, this dude and uh, they are beating the crap out of him. And uh, again, on one Negro there, one always one Negro try to help. You know, that Negro over there, hey man, I'm trying to help you. Don't tell me hish. This guy in the mid hair, brothers, okay, unruly passenger, let's try to open plane door mid flight. And meet hell trying to open the window and then try to get out. And then they are beating the spirit out of him. Okay, they took this dude, they put it down, this Negro here, put his feet on him. Okay, you know, Negro got to be there doing this thing, you know, and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff are happening, okay? So, um, <clears throat> you see this, brothers, you see there's a lot of things going on in the airport and also in the airplane. All praises to the most high, the ley line. Police are looking for this man and woman they say stole $16,000 cash from a stranger who offered to help them feed their family. Police say the couple told the woman they needed help with food around 2 in the afternoon, May 27th, near Parkdale Avenue and Palma Drive on Staten Island. She invited them into her apartment for food and police say they stole $16,000 in cash and took off in a large white SUV. Now, I'm bringing this up. Well, the Mosa is bringing this up. But I have to comment on this and let the brothers know. Not everybody, brothers, out there are angels. You don't bring certain people in your house. Not everybody that asks that shall receive. Certain people will come up to you dressing as angel. Hey, man, I need food to feed my children and stuff. You invited them to come to your house. They rob you 16 Gs. Be very, 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 very careful. 
I don't want my people to say, oh my God, I met two angels that are inviting them in my house. They turn out to be two demons. Woman rob of 16K cash after offering to help couple feed kids. Be very careful. This woman, she had a good heart. She wanted to do a good thing, but she didn't have the spirit upon her. She didn't have the the spirit the heart of discernment so that's what happened all praises to the most i think even recording uh yes it is oh two gig oh wow let's go brothers and sisters give me a one if Wait, you can what hear the hell? me and see me well <laughs> what is this um all yeah, right okay wow i don't know how, how did this happen but okay communion you need to watch this the most i want you to watch that i don't know why but uh no uh the, the, the june 16th for communion oh, I hope. <laughs> all praises we'll look now at this water that is coming off of the roof just above there the property that's on top of that area where the water is spilling out is where that fire was this afternoon cpd now reporting that this fire is out it was put out quickly and there were no injuries but it is that rooftop where this fire started a little bit before 11 today and i want to give you a look at some video that people captured we captured from our chopper, but also many people captured on their own cell phones. Again, this was earlier this morning, a little bit before 11, when people noticed these flames jumping from the roof of this property. People were capturing it from the apartment building right next door, again, many of them on their phones, posting it to the Citizen app, where you could see those flames were pretty high, causing a lot of people to gather both from their apartments, but also here on the ground to watch. High rise fire in Chicago. The Mosa is burning your blessing down. All praises. Blake, New this two. morning, 25 units and more than 100 firefighters responded to a residential building in Hell's Kitchen overnight. This call came in shortly after 1 a.m. for 401 West 50th Street. Firefighters battled flames on the second and third floors of this five-story building. The fire was brought under control in just under an hour. Three firefighters, three residents all suffered minor injuries and were treated at local hospitals. All praises to the most high, plague number two. Breaking news in Thousand Oaks where a brush fire broke out by the 101 freeway earlier this morning. Look at all the engines that were out there. Deputies say they have taken somebody into custody on suspicion of arson. They believe this man may have started the fire around 3 o'clock this morning near the Rancho Road on ramp. All praises to the most high. Out flames at an Oakland Park home. And authorities believe a lightning strike may be to blame here. Let's go to Local 10's Christian Delarosa live now with this part of our team coverage tonight. Christian. That's right. The woman that lives in this home tells us she heard a large boom. Next thing you know, she was running for her life. Plague number 10 and plague number two. Thunder voices, a large boom and fiery conflagration. Look at the smoke billowing from the home. And the cell phone video showing crews in the middle of their fire fight. Oh, I was in my room. In the back. Tina Testaverde says she and another man inside barely made it out. Well, I was trying to crawl out and the smoke was... A look from Sky 10 at the home on Northeast 7th Avenue near Cypress Creek Road in Oakland Park, just off of 95. But it was a Fort Lauderdale firefighter first to respond. Rescue 53 was on the way back from a call. Happened to be here at the light, looked to the left and saw a fully involved structure fire, which uh, thank goodness they saw that because time is people. The Oakland. All right. I agree. All praises to the most high beloved. Uh, we're going to stop here today. There are way so many stuff uh, we could have uh, show, but oof, there are so many things. So, so, so many things. All right, let's see if the most I want us to see anything else before we go. Oregon man. Oh, Mike, oh, the arrest that guy. Let me see if they get him. Let's close with, the guy, with this dude. Police say the man in these surveillance images, Owen Nicholson, had been on the run since Friday after investigators say he murdered three people in Oregon. Okay. By early Sunday, he was in the custody of Milwaukee police. This is something that you hope never happens in your community in the town that you call home.
Police saying that rampage started when Nicholson allegedly ran over a couple with a white Dodge pickup at an RV campground in North Bend, Oregon, Friday. A man was killed, his wife in critical condition. Police found another man, believed to be Owen's father, dead in his trailer. Wow. Minutes later, police responding to a shooting at a marijuana... Okay, uh, let's see what's in this cop car. Okay, all right. The new black... What? All right, whatever. Marijuana dispensary. Or the new blessing. Uh, whatever. A 47-year-old woman was found dead. Police believing Nicholson then ditched the white pickup before leaving town. We believe he drove. That, that's about all I can say about it at this time, that they drove to Wisconsin. Oregon affiliate KEZI TV reporting Nicholson kidnapped a woman and forced her to drive more than 30 hours to Milwaukee. Authorities say Nicholson turned himself into Milwaukee police early Sunday morning without incident. MPD wouldn't comment on Nicholson's arrest and questions remain about why he came here more than 2,000 miles away from where a killing spree began. The kidnapped woman is okay and heading back to Oregon. Meantime, Nicholson faces a number of charges, including first degree murder. He's expected in court here in the coming days and will face extradition back to Oregon. All right. Well, well, the new station that brought this to you is why you know what that means? <coughs> wow. They got that guy. Hmm. Huh. Okay, all right. The most I wanted us to see this, and uh, okay, the beloved sister Lisa Cabrera, may she be at peace. Um, nine children. Oh, okay, that thing is still going over there. Okay, all right. Okay, that whole thing we we made a video about this on our other channel. So yeah, you know those people are catching hell. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. We I think we're done here, brothers, sisters. Thank you for being here. It is good to be here. <clears throat> it was a pleasure spending like at least two hours with you, talking. You know. Have a nice day, brothers. Uh, fast pray. Repeat. Repeat. This should be like it should be already 11 p.m. on on Monday. So. And it's 2 a.m., brothers. We start this thing at 7, uh, 6 or 7. It's just 2 a.m. It's just like, ah, so many things to do. All praises to the Most High, man. Shalom. Be at peace.